This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 804 for the week of Monday, February 5th, 2024. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. And my name is Alex. And on today's show, very special guest translator for One Piece in Weekly Show to Jump and Manga Plus. We have Stephen Paul with us. How's it going, Stephen? And Wanted. Oh, and so wanted we'll talk about oh that a little bit later yeah we'll talk about that in a couple minutes we yeah. should we have a lot of amazing guests today like we this do. is quite the lineup of uh everyone everyone awesome just this is all encompassing there's no one this else is what i get for saying on the show either what a week ago or two weeks ago that oh yeah yeah i watched this this animated special but you know this has never been monsters has never been released yeah. in officially in yeah. english and, and yeah. you are to thank i think viz yeah. media was <laughs> listening to you and they just wanted to make a fool it. of me and I appreciate it. So does that mean I have to talk poorly about the law novel and they'll actually translate it? So like. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, uh, law aficionado Brodsky's with us. Ayo. Let's go Brodsky. <laughs> uh, I mean, you have the tattoos, so I think you do technically get to call yourself a law aficionado. How's it going, Brodsky? Hang it in there. Yeah, that's about. It's 2024. <laughs> We're um, a month in. We'll I make bet. it. Um, sure uh we also have uh this we have sorry a lot of people uh voice of flampe marianne bray is joining us how's it going marianne hello i'm good we have joining us again this time with other people as well uh we have adr director anthony bowling former adr director for one piece anthony bowling how's it going anthony good also kawamatsu baby get my oh i'm get my green boy out there too he's, he's gone the now man. he's left on the island of wano but he's not dead no he's, he's he, not he's got to come back and be zoro's father-in-law i think the chances of that are not, not zero, zero. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> if he Step only gets some more yeah if she gets some more swords he'll be there yeah uh, Zoro Actually, would be like more swords yeah yeah, and also you said father-in-law because if he like marries Hiyori and uh, Kawamatsu is his stepfather, yeah, it's, uh, her it's, stepfather, then yeah. it works fine. He's gonna give her away. Yeah, we'll figure this out. Um, that's a one-sided marriage too, by the way. Um, <laughs> and uh, last but certainly not least, the current ADR director for One Piece, Emily Farhard- Farhardo. Sorry about that, Hi. Emily. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, anytime. So this is coincidental. I feel like the Anthony Emily combo, which is great. I just don't want to make you guys think that you're inseparable, unless you are. And we are inseparable. It's true. Yeah. Okay. It's in our okay. contract. We can't All do right. anything yeah. one piece without each other. Okay, <laughs> that sounds about right. Um, Emily, how's how's it been being the ADR director? We miss Anthony, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, we're very sad, but. Go. I, I assume he has to. <laughs> I assume he has to stick around with that contract. He has to at yes. least sit there. And yeah, he has there. to be present in all sessions, just in the corner, pa pa pa. Yeah, yeah, just in the back, pa 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 pa. They're like, get out, and I'm like, it's my contract. We... <laughs> yeah, no, but it's uh... what a weird contract Crunchyroll has. That's yeah, no, it's uh... there are weirder yeah. ones, very specific. But, um... I could believe that. <laughs> um. Yeah, so today we're going to go through what is, I was going to say, really boring chapter. Nothing to talk about. I'm sure we'll finish it in 10 minutes. Uh, chapter 1106, in all honesty, very excited to talk about this. Um, Steven, we have three pieces of news that you're going to help us with before we get mm-hmm. into the manga. Uh, each of them is weirder and more surprising <laughs> than the last. Uh, uh-huh. So, like, I was like, do we talk about this? Let's start with the good news. Yes. Um since it's, that's it's so, not really yeah, that yeah. it's not really that weird uh since i think a lot of people probably would have guessed that this was coming after uh monsters was released in uh english on the shonen jump app a few uh, a week or two ago um so yes we are officially doing the um the uh, release of the print release of wanted which is the uh, oda eichiro short story collection that um is all uh pieces that he did before the serialization of one piece um it's just one of those things that i think always kind of slipped in between the cracks historically speaking i think viz has always felt like maybe they just always felt like one piece was kind of underperforming and so they were hesitant to commit to a bunch of secondary stuff that's why we didn't have the color walks for you know a good long time um but uh it seems like you know that momentum has really picked up 
and uh, with the uh, the OVA of Monsters, it was uh, a very good opportunity for us to finally uh, get around to that. And uh, I, I pretty much found out in the same order that everyone else did as well, because first they told me, okay, you're going to do the monsters one shot. And I was like, okay, just that. All right. Well, okay. And then like two weeks later, he's like, oh yeah, also we're going to do the rest of the book as well. So um, <laughs> yeah, look forward get to on that. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that should That's be- That's in um, the fall, right? I think they said fall. So, uh, oh, sure. Yeah, I, I guess so. They, it was part of a- um, a uh, licensing announcement um so Spring. i would assume it's yeah. on a schedule somewhere um and uh so yeah that's a a fun thing to to look forward to and you, i, you I think it looked like it was i sorry to interrupt i think they called it something else right yes it like it's wanted. called uh it's called wanted uh Eichiro oda before one piece um which is uh a clever way to uh, you know put it into context because some people are going to pick it up and they're going to be like, why is the art so weird? Um, and it's you know, because he was like 19 when he drew all these stories. So or um, less, yeah, yeah. Got to get the butts in the seats. Mm -hmm. Got to get butts in seats. Unlike yes. Egghead, where you get the butts out of the seat and everywhere else. Out of the yeah, chance, certainly. Face. Yeah. yeah, I gotta say, I'm I'm really excited uh, for this. I mean, obviously mm, me for for everybody who's been into One Piece for forever it's uh mm -hmm. it's it's Long a really coming. exciting thing to see uh i've had a japanese copy of wanted for like almost 20 years now mm -hmm. <laughs> it's you know alex uh, has been reading, like yeah. it's, been, it's been 84 years but this also yes. does this pose the question <laughs> of like one piece party and like uh yeah. the with the little school one they're doing right now. Which... The law one that you said is and never the law happen, novel. Right? Just like... every time Viz makes an announcement, I'm just like, One Piece is popular. Come on, like you, you, you done all the other ones. Can I have One Piece Party mm -hmm. official, please? Yeah I, yeah, I am super curious about One Piece Party because I know very little about it. I, I think it's like we're tiptoeing into there, as you said. Like now that One Piece is more popular. Well, is that the same one as the high school? No, no, like, it's different. Alternate... It's, okay, it's, it's... it's two separate, ongoing oh. series. God, mm -hmm. okay. It's not good when I don't yeah. know One Piece stuff happening. Uh, Steven, yeah, any anything else with Wanted that you want to mention? Um, no, just look forward to it. All right, so let's happy, get to weirder to news. Um, yeah. You, you choose um, what you think is weirder. All right, yeah, I guess, well, here's the one that, that's kind of dominated the last 24 hours or so, which was that um, the authorities in Japan announced that they had uh, arrested two... <laughs> arrested two foreign nationals. Ooh, that sounds scary. Um, in Japan <laughs> for um, purchasing, uh, purchasing, uh, you know, issues of Jump before release date with intent to, and you know, uploading them basically. Um, so part of the, um, you know, the sort of the the pirate the bootleg um, scheme that that goes on with um, uh, the Jump manga. Uh, where they get leaked and um, put up online beforehand. Um, just kind of a little bit weird that they, you know, they talk about like the, the guys that they arrested, but not like why was the business selling them, uh, you know, issues of jump supposedly. Um, so I don't know yeah. if they're, if that's really the actual story or not, but um, uh, yeah. And there was a lot of um, a reaction to this um, and some people saying, you know, oh, well, this is going to have an effect on the uh, the scanlations or the, the schedule of the scanlations. Um, I, count me skeptical just because I know that there's probably a lot, you know, there, there's probably more than just two people who are, you know, it's looking whack -a -mole for this. Also yeah, exactly. These things. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, you know, I, I, I saw that there were state statements from some of the... Um, the scanlation groups or reactions or whatever. Uh, but I don't even know if that was like them admitting like these are our guys or what, or if this is just like people guessing. Um, but there, there will be, you know, that it's not going to, to make a dent long term. but I do think I wonder, that it is. I guess it's never really been a deterrent because this happened. No, it's since happened we've before, been doing the yeah. podcast. This has happened like at least in, three or in four extreme times. fashion. Wait, yeah, arrests. Yeah. Like yeah yes yeah like full on arrests yeah. I mean copyright law in Japan is pretty extreme yeah. although sometimes weirdly used because like doujin is a thing and that's fine yeah. um, but that's like not that's not like money. a license type thing it's like even like we're talking about like doujin or something like that like when people have like these conventions where they sell it they actually sell it at like a cost value of like producing it so like that would America could be like four dollars oh, okay. for a book they actually mm -hmm. can't sell it at a profit they have to sell it at cost well, because they don't make profit mm -hmm. off of it they do it for fun so like 
this to me is I had like I was aghast with that because I didn't actually hear of the arrest and so like or what it was until right now. But like mm. it's back I feel like it's get old. Be like back in our day, like yes, we read Scanlation because like we didn't get it here. But now that it's for free. It makes no sense. It makes yeah, no sense. It's, so it's like, I don't, oh, I got you, know. you really cool water. It's exactly like all the other water, but it, it you know, yeah. it's, it's hot. Um, I don't recall uh, scan groups in the past after this happened, you know, really say anything about like if it's going to cause a delay. So mm-hmm. this to me, like, I mean, yeah, it's it, there people are always going to find a way to, to scan stuff. But I think that this I don't know this this time around, it was, it was kind of interesting in that in that regard specifically. Um, I think this is like the first time in some time that something like this has prominently happened. Yeah, when I say sometime, a, it's been a little while. Like this generation yeah. of One Piece fans, I don't think have experienced. <laughs> like, it. I was I was uh, looking at one of the threads and they were talking about how like, oh well, we're still gonna we're still gonna scanslate One Piece. We're just gonna wait until the chapters release in Japan. What's the fucking point? <laughs> at, that, at that point, what's Moron. the point? Yeah, if you yeah, because the, the official release is free. So I think vanity is probably the answer at that point. It's like yeah, treasure hunting. Yeah. You want to be the first to, cr- to yeah. crack it. I, I solved. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, but, I mean, that's always what it's been. Yeah. And and that's why too, like, even if, even if every single, you know, actual fan of the series was like, uh, if they were hypothetically to say like, Oh, we're not going to touch it before release out of respect for Oda or, you know, whatever. Um, there would still be people who would do it because there's so much demand for it that like, it, you know, from that perspective, oh, we're leaving money on the table by not being the first ones to get it out and get all the ad, you know, revenue and, and all that stuff. Because it's a big business. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of money that goes that changes hands. I mean, I think um, Shonen Jump has done just about everything they could. I saw someone, I think, post that, you know, if they've got if they go all digital, this would solve this problem, which even assuming mm, that were kind the of, case, kind of, he's kind I'll, of. I'll get to it. I mean, I'm. Second, yeah. yeah, I actually. Why don't you go ahead? Yeah. Um, well, I was going to point out too that um, it may this may have an effect on the 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 scheduling of the uh, or the timing, I should say, of the um, scanlations and the the scans themselves. I don't think it will necessarily have an effect on the spoiler, like the text, um, you know, where people spread around what is happening in the chapter. Uh, because that has been happening for the last couple of years. Um, that's been happening basically, you know, so I, you know, I get the files at a certain period of time and it's very obvious that it's coming from other people who are in my position. So in other words, somebody who either works on the series, presumably, you know, in one of the other language versions of it, since there are lots of partners that Shueisha has uh, around the uh, the globe, someone who's either working on it or who has access to it, or even I don't know if they even have like a back door into this to the server. I don't know, um, but somebody who has access to the material, um, you know, basically for for clout, I assume, you know, goes and tells someone else who tells someone else, like, hey, here's what happens in this chapter, and um, and then the uh, you know the information trickles out, and uh, so that usually happens like about 24 hours to 48 hours after um, the uh, the material first. Um, goes up online for um, the international folks who work on the translation of the material. Um, And so unless they get scared, uh, you know, I would assume that will probably continue because that has nothing to do with where the printed issues are going and and whatnot. So, and I wonder, like, first of all, they're in a different country. What do you, what are they, what could like happen to them besides them losing that position? Um, Yeah. And looking bad potentially, but like Mm -hmm. they're not to be fair to them which I'm, i don't want to be but um <laughs> yeah they i mean they're not stealing like these other people were like i guess bribing certain com- uh, yeah yeah there's a certain unclear. level of of sleaziness that is involved with getting the um scans the print yeah the, yeah, the scans out and but, there um, always has been too uh mm-hmm. like people i think 
it's very easy for people who just enjoy them, including us back right. in the day, Yeah, exactly. you know, just to be like, oh, this is just a thing that's coming out by fans who are really into the series, but there is a sleazy element to it, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there are, I mean, there always is. Um, what's the last uh, of yeah, these so the last, stories? Yeah, so the last thing, I will try to keep this brief because it's actually a very complicated um, topic, but it, it's yeah, the sort of thing that... I completely understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I will go through it, but... um. Uh, it might have gotten kind of lost in the shuffle with all of the the arrest news that that we talked about. But um, prior to that news breaking, there was this kind of, um, I guess, controversy, if you will, that showed up. And it's only really tangentially related to One Piece, but um, that's because it involves uh, Megumi Ishitani, who is you know the uh, the current kind of wonder child of the uh, the One Piece anime. Um, you know, just super genius animator. She's been doing incredible work on all this stuff. And um, uh, so there about a week ago, um, there was a, a news cycle in Japan. Um, and I did see, you know, I first saw it from an article on ANN. So um, some people may have seen this as well. Uh, it was a mangaka, a shoujo mangaka named uh, Hinako Ashinano, um, who did some series. She's a veteran. Um, and uh, her most famous one in English is probably Sand Chronicles, which Viz, I believe, put out. Um, you know, back in the 2000s. And um, she recently had a series called uh, Sex, uh, what is it? Sexy Tanaka-san or something like that. And uh, it was um, adapted into a live action TV drama and uh, which recently concluded. And she had, um, she had posted on her blog ab- about how like the, the process did not go well, where like she felt like her, um, feedback on the choices that they were making in the adaptation were um, kind of going against some of the, the you know, the the tenets of her her view of the series. Um, she deleted it because you know it, it caused it ruffled some feathers. Um, but then um, you know tragically she she was found having uh, committed suicide. Um, and so you you can imagine like that's a very thorny issue in it. You know, there's certain. Um, you know there it looks a certain way right and, and so it, it caused a lot of controversy in japan and i saw a, a lot of uh, tweets about this where uh you know a lot of discourse about um you know what is the right way to adapt material and what are you know like it, it how much fault lies with the producers for the way that they handled it um you know what um what were things that she could have done that would have made it better um, you know, there are lots of back and forth. And as you can imagine, you know, it's a pretty emotional topic. Um, and so a lot of people who are involved in adaptations of stuff um, were chiming in with their experiences and their their thoughts on the matter. And one of them was Megumi Ishitani, who, of course, is um, heavily involved with the One Piece anime right now. And, you know, you can definitely say, you know, by looking at her stuff, like she is the type of person who goes in there and she really finds like the interesting she finds stuff that is emotional and impactful about the source material and she really um kind of i don't want to say makes it her own but she really elaborates on it and brings it to a a new life and a new level and stuff and so she had you know some comments about um you know just the ways that different mediums have different needs and you know these are things that i think we've talked about a lot like um you know talking about the live action I know Oda mentioned in an author comment, I forget mm-hmm. which episode, nine, that, that very good episode with uh, Queen doing the full rendition mm. of... Oh, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with, like, all-timer in English as well. Um, mm. And I, I think Oda's comment to that episode was like, wow, this looks like a movie. Like, I think right. he... I and, and we talked about how he is even it feels like he cuts some other corners because he has so much more faith in the anime team mm. um mm-hmm. to like exp- expand on stuff. Anyway, sorry, go ahead, Stephen. Yeah. Um and so yeah, she, you know, her comments were were pretty much um in line with that, which is that like, you know, some things aren't going to work in a different medium and you have to you know, you have to approach the material with that medium in mind first and foremost before you worry about stuff. This, you know, this is very commonplace stuff that we we hear and we talk about all the time when, um, you know, manga or novels or uh, anime gets adapted to live action. You know, whatever the case may be, um, it's a uh, it's you know it's a very common 
um, topic, but because it's, you know, coming from someone who is um, attached to this, this very prominent show um, naturally, you know, because it's Twitter, people pick it apart from all different angles that she didn't intend it to. And so it really kind of went viral in some ways, you know, on top of all of the other stuff that people are saying about this general topic. Um, and, uh, and, and so she did get kind of bad. She, she had some, some comments that like, Oh, I feel terrible because of, you know, what ended up happening with the, the conversation. Um, and uh, so that's basically how that all, that all came about. Unfortunately, you know, you had a lot of, of people. It's one of those like really embarrassing things when you see like um, people in writing in English, like tweeting at Japanese people. Secondhand and, like, embarrassment. Yeah, like just really going off on them on a complete tangent. Like uh, you know, I somebody saw some was of those, though, some, yeah. yeah, somebody was like, "This is why because you hate Sanji because you you know you do this and that, that with his." And yeah. It's just like oh my god, and and these people see what you're writing, like oh this is terrible. How can you like. And she she is, I think we've talked about before, like, I think is going to probably be like the next Hosoda or of that, like, Mm -hmm. level. She is. She clearly has the talent. Yeah. She's so incredible. Um, And everything she's done to like the most recent opening is really her vision, Mm -hmm. um, which is just an incredible one. Yeah. Um, It's yeah. it, It like hurts to see. I saw she was like being very emotionally honest which mm-hmm. i don't know happens a lot even on twitter yeah. in japan um or like very open and vulnerable about these things but yeah it sucks mm-hmm. it sucks to see that from foreign fans as well uh yeah. doing that to her without but, understanding yeah, I, I did, all of the package mm-hmm. with it. yeah and i did you know just because it is a kind of a complicated subject to explain like from step a to you know where we are now uh, i did feel like um, in case anyone had had like caught wind of part of that, I felt it would be helpful to kind of explain what the uh, the full context of the, that that whole discourse was. Um, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really have anything to do with One Piece itself, of course. Um, you it's know, a good it's conversation like... to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, thank you, Stephen. Um, I'm I'm sure we'll probably we have next week actually. Uh, Henry Thurlow is supposed to be joining us again. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I'm sure we will talk about the anime extensively uh, Mm -hmm. next week. Um, But I do want to get into this chapter, and I'd be remiss if we didn't. Uh, So before we do, please check us out at patreon.com slash one piece podcast. Alternate images, titles, ad-free episodes, um, and a lot more. Check that out. Now, let's get on with the show. This is the manga recap for chapter 1106 on your side. As we said earlier, you could read this chapter for free, legally, worldwide, and without m- making anyone risk arrest at shonenjump.viz.com or <laughs> mangaplus.shuasha.co.jp. Really, do it for the criminals out there. You know, that's, that's yeah. Anyway. <laughs> here, thank you, Marianne, for the thumbs up. Um, just like, what are you talking about? Um Let's start, Ed, uh, with the author comment. Yes. Uh, Adult child Ichiro Oda says, I got an Optimus Prime robot that transforms when you yell transform. Yeah. Is that like the clap on, clap off, but it's with a transformer? <laughs> like that's A buddy of mine's cool. got that. It fucking rules. Those it's, rock. I saw one with like Grimlock where you just like tell him to transform. Mm-hmm. There is a Grimlock one. Yeah. I, I, want, I bet he's got it too. But You know, the... Oda... I never Optimus forget is really huge. It's it's way bigger than you think. I'm pretty sure if one of us were in Oda, you know, that he would probably be doing what we do just day to day. Um, you can put it next to his Terminator. He, yeah, you had the full well, size. Ter- Terminator one. probably towers over it anyway. But yeah, okay, he could put yeah. it next to his shark toilet. You know, like that's fine. I wonder. I wonder if Building he got like a, a Japanese one. a Japanese version, so he has to say Henshin. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. like yeah, the, cool. the Japanese like Transformers and were much like, cooler what? in the past. Yeah. They were like metal and like actually like transform. <laughs> yeah. Well, the uh, I think I, and Optimus Prime has a different uh, name as well in Japan. I think it's Convoy or something. Oh, I, shit. Convoy yeah. Jack. I play that song. <laughs> Convoy, Convoy Jack. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I shit. love it. Episode title. 
<laughs> yeah, that really confused people. Just, uh, uh-huh. just Optimus Prime with like a <laughs> farmer's hat or something. I don't know. Uh, Ed, I'd be remiss if we did not spend at least 20 minutes on this cover oh, yeah. page. Well, we got, yes, this is the uh, a re- reader request for Robin giving a crocodile a cute outfit by Abba, and we see Robin with a thumbs up and this giant crocodile wearing sunglasses, a kerchief, like a, a tank, t- <laughs> like a, a muscle tee with, uh, instead of Lacoste, it's Lacosta with the crocodile symbol on it, uh, hor- like vertical striped pants and a horizontal striped uh, tail, tail sleeve. Pant? Tail sleeve and it's a tail snuggie. Yeah, <laughs> and a, a, bow, a bow tie on, on the end there, and he is he is so happy with himself. His neck is up perched. He's got pride. His his back is straight up. <laughs> like look it's at him. It's an he's adorable so outfit. Robin, Robin, good job. Uh, on the nose. Um, is the Stephen? I have to ask. Is there a pun with Lacosta? No, it's just the so. brand. Laco- yeah, Lacoste. No, no, just... Lacoste. I know Lacoste is the brand, but they just did a twist on it right so i'm wondering yeah that... i don't know i mean that's pretty much just like the logo and everything too i so. know it's yeah. pretty crazy. maybe just like uh not be sued <laughs> or pay money it's an anchor tattoo look at that yeah he's i a, love this he's a pretty cool croc yeah yeah i like to think I mean, that uh, i like to think she gave the other crocodile cute outfits too uh yeah yeah, yeah the person she probably yeah. would yeah. uh-huh it it it's funny you mention that because uh, yeah, Joey that. on the Discord posted this earlier. He said that some somebody had sent it to him earlier in the week and wasn't sure if it was a leak or an edit or what. And it was literally <laughs> this, except uh, without with the um, crocodile. It was the actual yeah crocodile character. the character yeah, crocodile. wearing wearing all of this, uh, <laughs> and it's quite funny. Um, very much an edit uh, and very much a leak, but. Uh, I was happy to see it after this chapter. Well, don't worry. They uh, got arrested for that. Uh, very specifically. Probably. The, the way like my, I saw this in the first thought would be like, I want Crocodile in this outfit. Like, It's on the Discord, Brodsky. Go check. Um, the, the, the difference yeah. is Crocodile would be really pissed he had a dress like this. Oh, even I though think he so. probably I think he'd be on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Crocodile, does it, Crocodile wears a suit at the beach. He is that person. He'd wear a butt right? snuggie, though. Look at that. Like, yeah, I was going to say, and, where, where does Crocodile wear the uh the striped tail uh, thing. or or is it crocodile in a crocodile snuggie in this that's in this house in a crocodile oh, is that a kigurumi yeah yes. oh my god maybe he would have a striped jacket to go with it so you still have the suit element oh, but it okay. would because it would match go. the pants kind of right where would the bow go though like on, on the it... coat on the coat and his hair his no hair yeah. he'd have a little little ponytail a little bow you know a little fancy boy oh yeah yeah the bow would go on his ponytail it's good. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Why not? I'm sure I don't like it. <laughs> because I'm a, I'm a very grumpy old man. Um, Look anyway, at him, though. Uh, How can you hate that? It's no, funny. I love this. I, I mean, Sir Crocodile dress. And, uh, Sir Croc, well, again, villain. I Why think... Why do you hate fun, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've explained that over the last 15 years of podcasting, Brodsky. Um listen back to the other 800 something episodes i i love this crocodile don't get me wrong i just think sir crocodile is someone who doesn't enjoy fun ever and so he has been the idea that he would yeah he does enjoy hanging out with his banana gators but in like the way that an evil villain has like a cat you know like it's not because of the you know um but maybe his time with buggy and cross guild will have like loosened him up to it a little bit Probably not. No, the only thing it's no, no, hanging up to Mihawk, is, though. yeah, he does love Mihawk. Mihawk is the um, most uptight man in One Piece. <laughs> oh, they just share recipes because Mihawk's <laughs> the one cooking for, for and uh, wine. Mm. Yeah, um, lots of wine. Oh, they probably yeah. they no, they definitely enjoy each other's company. Okay, okay, we're getting off track. <laughs> a thing that's never happened on this show. Uh, Mihawk uh, and Crocodile, kind of like Fraser and Niles. I can see that. Oh my you God. know what? Yes, You're that accurate. is the perfect. Yeah. That's that's the cross guild, and then well, who is buggy in that no, situation? See, the thing is, the thing is this: neither of them are persnickety enough to be Niles. <laughs> it would just oh, really be two Mihawk. Frasers hanging out. Two Frasers and Buggy could be uh, Niles. Yeah, Buggy true. Buggy as Niles is a little more accurate. Yeah, yeah, I guess we solved it. Can you stop doing wanted and do this instead? Can you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> can we just make Stephen? Frasier can you? Into... Yeah, let's do that. Um. Shop my Thank scripts you. around. 
There you go. Um, Marianne, why don't we start the chapter? Okay, so the chapter opens up with a nice big shot of Egghead Island, and you can see the warships surrounding it. Um, And we hear the voices of Marines saying, Look at them going at it, just like the paper said! And then we get a little close-up of Luffy, who is very blubbery looking, and he goes, And he's back to being skinny. The Marines, of course, are dumbfounded, and they go, Huh? He just digested all that food? Oh, it feels like I'm next. This... It's a weird looking Marine right there. Yeah, he's a, yeah, well... he's a weird little guy. Uh, and the other Marine says, <laughs> Is he not human? Uh, you know, we have by a... the way, that guy is already being affected by the Gear 5 thing. Uh, his his face is being stretched in a weird, cartoony way. <laughs> a little bit of an also, if you look. He, he almost this, looks like is... he's been bonnied because he kind of looks like a kid. Yeah. He might have Arnold been. from Bonnie Hey Arnold. being a verb. Um, yeah, Arnold. <laughs> it is Arnold from Hey Arnold. It, hey Marine. No, wait, no, that doesn't work. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Next panel is we got a big old explosion um, coming out on the side, and they say, Woo, watch out. <clears throat> Looks like we're getting surrounded by flames. We can't stay on this island any longer. I know he's an emperor, but on the count of three... We'll all put sea prism cu- stone cuffs on him together as Luffy begins to grin and shift into gear five. Uh, next page, we get another shot of outside of Egghead, and there are more warships. And they say, right, one, two, and then we hear a bleh, which I'm presuming is Luffy, maybe? Not sure. No, so it looks <laughs> like... The guys. Yeah, you see exploding? all of those... They're, oh no, they're God. flying they into flying. the air there. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Whoa. Shades of Whoa. shades of asterisk <laughs> right here. This is there are a few images in this chapter. I was like not sure what I was looking at. Uh... I I agree, but this was also a hilarious joke that it's basically off screened because I mean obviously they're not gonna. We talked about this last week. It's like what do these guys think they're gonna be doing with Emperor of the Sea, uh, with an yes. Emperor of the Sea? Like how are they gonna even approach this situation? These regular goons and. Here Not well. There's the outcome. No, they're <laughs> going into the water right now. <laughs> All right. So to continue, uh, they have given up, looks like. They say, get on the ships. Egghead is done for because the buster call is beginning. Uh, Turn it into a sea of fire from the shore inward. And then we cut from some Marines and some close-ups of some uh, cannons being fired to Vegapunk, Stella, looking up at the sky with various tiny little people all up in there kuma and such i'm presuming because he says kuma bonnie and he yeah, yells you can see kuma and atlas and i assume frankie is to the the, the squiggles to the they're, yeah they're very small uh and he yells up at them come in atlas and then we get a nice close-up of saturn looking scary Shoot that foolish family once and for all. And we cut to the uh, pacifistas, the sort of police-looking ACAP uh, pacifistas getting ready to fire the la- fire in their lasers. Raw. Um, and before we go on, I, I will point out it's too late. The people have already sent their angry letters who are listening. But uh, for you know to to protect our honor, I will point out the ship in the beginning. The voices is coming from a mysterious. Uh, arriving party um, who oh, was previously ah. mentioned to be coming to Egghead. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Why oh, it's a I good. Not say that. I yeah. didn't catch yeah. that. It's a good non specific ship yeah, design there. Yes. Yeah, I... like I don't. So now that we know what's happening later, I have no idea. I still don't know what I'm looking at in the with the ship, but. It's almost uh, yeah. like, it almost looks like what? it has bones on this side, but it's. Really That's hard what to I tell. thought. Yeah. I think it's. It, yeah, it's the, it's the shields will. The rounded shield. Oh, we'll, we'll see him okay. Later, yeah. I I think like the first thing that's supposed to pop in your head is the Victoria Punk, which was cut in half, mm. um, because that mm. has bones like that. But I I don't know. Mm. I had not picked up on that. Yes, but back to all the folks in the air. Um, we we get a as kind of a, a repeat of the um the last uh, double page spread from the previous chapter. Where, Equally cool. Uh, yes, still it's uh, still. Kuma hugging Bonnie and everyone else kind of falling out of the sky as the pacifistas lasers are um, getting ready to fire down below. Uh, and we hear uh, Vegapunk 
um, through the radio here going, Atlas, tell Bonnie. And uh, now we can see Sanji, who is uh, skywalking up to them saying, Bonnie, I'm coming. Which is like, I mean, dude, she's like, Kuma's got her. Like, you, you know. Yeah, it's like, all, it's what are you doing here? <laughs> he's, he's, he's trying? <laughs> he's going to save them both because they're yeah, going to be shot by lasers. He's pulling a groundskeeper willy from uh, Trias of Horror 5. <laughs> I'll save the one of you. I'm bad at this. <laughs> uh, there he is. And At- Atlas responds, I'll, I'll do it, Stella. And um, now we're now we're like, we're fully in manga time here. Um, where Atlas uh, sw- air swims over to Kuma and Bonnie and uh, relays some message to Bonnie, who uh, looks astonished. And then it uh, occurs to her what she's hearing. We see a close up of her eye. And uh, the pacifistas are still charging, they're still getting ready. Uh, and now we see the worm's eye view um, from behind the pacifistas. And Bonnie shouts out, don't shoot us, Daddy! Help us escape this island. And uh, we know it's working because we see the uh, the sound waves as you do um, little concentric, concentric circles. circles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes beep beep uh, as the pacifista um, recognizes the signal. And uh, meanwhile, the Marines who are uh, a safe distance behind the pacifistas are like, "Did you hear a voice uh, through all the explosions?" Nah, couldn't have. Um, by, by the way, you mentioned this is in manga time. How well put, because these lasers take like yeah. a chapter and a half to, to, to load up here. Um, yes. yeah. it's like a, no, it's like the Pokemon, so you got to charge up for a... Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah like, you, you, you lose the turn. And it's like a solar solar beam, you got to charge once. Yeah. It's and the, then you go. It's, I think everyone remembers the Frieza episodes where five minutes was ten Five hours. minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. This will be done in five minutes. Um, <laughs> and the birdcage. Uh, Brodsky. Uh, then we have this really kind of like big spread where it's uh, a shot, I'm assuming, of like each different Kuma with charging up <laughs> their lasers. Uh, and you still have doing sh- it. Still, still charging. Yep. And as a, they each have like the different uh, numbers on the pass pieces has and then no you no have that's, so that's the mark the PX, three, right that's what's supposed yeah, PX3. to the that's model, model number yeah that's yeah, the PX3. model yeah mm-hmm. uh then you have a shot of just a bunch of the marines go huh and then it looks more i think over. just this is one of the few times sorry brodsky where the sound yeah. effects are important uh oh yeah because it's the yeah no let me go through that so first two panels of the kumazer has a sound effects that spin so they're turning around uh now presumably facing towards the uh, all of the Marines, because you can see that they're bathed in light, so the charging lasers have now been turned on to all of the Marines. And then you have Morris is like, why are they turning this way? As we see the squee noise of the lasers still charging. And then you have this giant panel of all of the ships, and it's just them screaming like, ah, oh, God, the PSCs have gone haywire! And it's shots of just all of the ships just being shot to hell. I uh, love this. I love this page. They, they Uno cool reversed them. them. They, 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 yeah. slapped, they <laughs> slapped that Uno guard. reverse card. Wow. <laughs> By the that's Marianne yeah. perfect, but not only that, but the reverse card has been used how many times in this arc so far? Remember, <laughs> so first, the first time Kuma was oh being, was it pre, pre-CP0? It was against them. Then CP0 yeah. had the authority chip. Just against everyone else. The hierarchy is all it's very rapid. Then season. then then York <laughs> then York used it against uh the uh you know and, and so then it's like hot potato with that so a little Saturn. bit. Saturn. So would this be like Bonnie with the final Uno reverse, just like So what you're saying oh, is no, Egghead is just a giant yeah. Uno game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so yeah. good. That's yes, amazing. Right. We're at the stage of Duck Season Fire. Yeah, they they, they drew <laughs> yeah. four pacifistas and you know <laughs> That was the egghead incident. Yeah. The draw for the mm-hmm. card. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a, a Marineford level spread here of the ship's getting blown. Oh, yeah. Up. God, Super it's cool. so good. But just I like, love all the little also, bodies. You think about it, too. It's like you play the trap card. At the same time, it's like, ha-ha. They're playing Uno and someone throws in a Yu-Gi-Oh card for no reason. Yes. <laughs> That's what's Yu-Gi-Oh? happening here. Is that anything? <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. 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 <laughs> what's the... I got a... No, Mirror Verse is not the card, I think is what I'm talking about. Blue Eyes um, White Drive 4. Yeah. 
You just like uh, activate the trap card of the the reverse card. I th- I think we talked about how cool the shading is with the lasers, and I think this panel, this page, sorry, uh, really exemplifies that. Mm-hmm. My opinion. Yeah. Ed. All right. Uh, so on on the next page, I'll describe what happens first. But they got the sh- the shocked faces of these of these marines, and then more pictures of just carnage of. You know, the pacifistas blowing the ships away and interspersed with all this is uh, a this monologue from Dr. Vegapunk who starts, The one worry in the back of my mind was seeing Bonnie killed by the father she loved. If you were to harm the daughter you loved so much, Kuma, it would be a tragedy beyond compare. Therefore, I inserted a directive into each unit made to look like Kuma, so that even if the highest authority in the world should command it, even if the entire world should be your enemy, Understand this, Bonnie. Kuma will always be on your side. This is just a selfish wish of mine. And it means, as he looks down with face, you know, face downcast, he's looking, uh, and actually the first panel on the, on the very first panel on the page is uh, Saturn sort of dodging out of the way or making a, making a quick move there in between all the, uh, uh, Laser beams Kuma. and destruction, and uh, then we get those close-ups of Bonnie and, and Kuma, or a pacifist to Kuma as well. But uh, what happens to Vegapunk? Anthony, oh. what happens to Vegapunk? I don't know. They they stop drawing it. <laughs> oh. uh-huh. The chapter just ends it suddenly. Just ends. <laughs> oh, it you have to reload the page. Have like it might have, that might just be your internet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On on this uh, beautiful. Uh, transition from seeing Vegapunk kind of looking down almost on his knees, this uh, Oppenheimer kind of attitude. Uh, The next panel, we see uh, Vegapunk. Uh, I know what comes next. And the leg of Saturn uh, piercing through what looks like uh, almost his chest. (laughs) Looks like he is almost... uh, impaled Vegapunk through the chest and he thinks, uh, Vegapunk, it's obvious that there will be consequences. <laughs> and uh, Bonnie screams, Vegapunk! Looking concerned now. Her attitude changed now that she knows the truth. Uh, and uh, Saturn looks uh, pissed. You can see the uh, veins yeah, really in his pissed. eye, yeah. his brow furrowed. He's uh, It says glare. But uh, yeah, this was unexpected, Vegapunk's betrayal. Uh, and Vegapunk uh, finishes, uh, you know, uh, going, it's obvious that there would be consequences for my willful actions. And uh, we see Frankie coming down, looking at Saturn. No, Vegapunk! And then the order comes, eliminate them, Kizaru. Now! Uh, we see a giant laser come shooting. Pew! And uh, the next, let me see, I have the next one as well, yeah. Uh from the ground, you can see Kizaru blasting up towards uh, Kuma and Atlas and Bonnie and Frankie. And uh, you can see that uh, Sanji, I like that kind of thumbs up, like, oh, I'm helping too. Uh, <laughs> he's kind of in front of uh, Kuma and Bonnie, like, I'm going to block Bonnie. <laughs> Sorry, it Kuma. It like too he's deflecting one of them. Yeah, he's, he's got his deflecting at least yeah. one. At yeah. least yeah. one. So we'll give him that. Uh, Frankie up top looks like he got grazed by that. I think he got hit. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely. Not in the Atlas. back. I Atlas. Hope. Atlas got hit. Yeah, Atlas defo. Uh, and we can see uh, the pain on their faces as you can kind of see them all get hit in those panels. And then Kizaru uh, shot from behind as he comes towards them with a sword made of light. And he says, I'll cut you both in two. Don't worry, Bonnie. It won't hurt. Uh, and right as he's coming down from behind his back, Kizaru puts his arm up to protect Bonnie, and Bonnie looks at Kizaru and says, Kizaru! How could you? We shared pizza together. Yeah. What, what I gotta ever? give gotta give Kizaru credit. It did not take him five minutes to charge his uh, his laser shots. Yeah, he, <laughs> he knows. Well, it was his laser originally. Like, he knows what he's doing. He's a fire Th- that's his laser not... much faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he knows how to fire his laser. Um... What is happening in that Sanji panel? Like, I can't make out where his face is. Or is that what supposed is... to be Sanji? Because I could not tell. Yeah, yeah, that panel 
I was looking oh, at yeah, it. Oh, yeah, so that, that, that one's half. loose. It's his fist. I see, because yeah. he's got, Ve- it's, I guess Vegapunk's written on, or Vega, whatever, is written on his pants. Yeah, on his pants. Boot. Shorts, yeah. yeah. Okay. The boot, I think. I, yeah. I, I could not tell who that was when I read this originally. Yeah, no. that's a rough one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope that one gets fixed. I mean, I guess it's not the most important thing. He's getting shot, you know, but. Yeah. Still, anyway, get to the next page. Why did I choose this page the week I'm sick? Uh, let's get it. Um. Wait, can I really do this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't. Do it. <laughs> do it anyway. <laughs> do it. Do it again. I'll do it get again. the drums in the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. There. Oh, yeah, perfect. Um, and here comes Luffy. Uh, so we talk a lot about, sorry to kill the momentum, but we talk about two-page spreads. This top one with Kizaru feels super weirdly lopsided because of where the cutoff is. Well, no, Oda's actually taking account of the of the margin of the uh, of the fold. I know, this week. but it, yeah. but then it in the digital version, it it's like there's just this empty space. Yeah, it's like right. why why is that left corner yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, it seemed anyway. It cool otherwise. It's just that that stuck out to me, and you just see the kinetic Luffy's fist. Uh, coming from the other side of the page here and hitting uh, Kizaru straight into, let's say, a building um, as Kuma and Bonnie fall and swoop. There goes the uh, work on my Foley work here. And there goes the fist from contracting back to Luffy as a rubber band would. And he is laughing. So weird, Luffy laughing in Gear 5. Do I it. think very out of character. Do it. Um, Do the laugh. The one spoiler I got was someone complaining about Luffy being too goofy in this form. And I think Dumb. They... Bad, <laughs> bad complaint. Yeah, bad I believe Moron. that is the... I, I, I don't like just saying this about people that I don't know, but that is the worst opinion about the series that I could imagine. Because that's the whole point. Sometimes people are goofy. just wrong. Yeah, it happens. It's, it happens. it's as telling as when you hear someone call him Luffy, when they're like, yes, yeah, I'm a big right. fan of One Piece. I love Luffy. And you're like, get out of my sight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> there's there's a, a few listeners out there who are like, oh, I guess I should... Stop listening now. Uh, no, oh, no, that's just me no, saying but... don't pretend to know the whole series and then get mad at those of us who spent the time and did the homework. Yes, that's <laughs> true. We do the homework every week. We do week. the homework every week. Not for school, but for One Piece we do. But because um, we love. Because we love. Uh, and here, Bonnie shocked that where the hell did Straw Hat Luffy come from? Um, and the famous catchphrase from Luffy yeah 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 full tummy full power um saying saying this he's always saying this yeah and it's funny because this is the thing that we have always said as readers and watchers but i don't think it has ever really been said out loud so a funny a particularly funny moment as he says i'm having fun now and you see the doom da 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 doom I, i i i don't remember specifically the salsa rhythm Anthony and Emily might have a fresher in their heads. I don't know. Uh, and you see all of Egghead has turned into a whirly twirly cartoon world um, as the ground and the buildings are contorted. Um, and I think we've mentioned way before we knew about Gear 5, what could the awakened version of Luffy really be? A bounce house? And here we go. Bounce house Luffy right here. As everyone baboings onto the ground, nary a scratch from from uh, landing here, and everyone's like, "Does it seem like the island is shaking?" Now, by the way, uh, if Ishitani or anyone is listening out there from the anime staff, this should look like a 1920s cartoon. I think yes. all of Egghead should be moving in that style, that like dancey mm. style. Yeah, mm. exactly. Like the the Mickey Mouse that is now yeah, in the public domain. Yeah, yeah. throw it's him just, in. There. It's, no, it's Cuphead. It's Egghead. Oh. It's Cuphead. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Oh. It's egg, <laughs> Egghead. Wow. Cuphead. Actually, yeah, Oda could throw in like Steamboat Willie now, and it would be fine. Yep. Just... He's gonna make that character now. <laughs> he's, he's gonna the be named Steamboat Will- Yeah, and he can turn. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna eat the steam steam fruit. I feel I'm like here to destroy you. I feel like it's just um, gonna be Steamboat Luffy. <laughs> Like, he's just going to blatantly there copy it, it. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. Get on I that, mean, Brodsky. 
I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Sorry. No, no. It's like, it's literally, it's being like, it's well in the public domain. So you could just put that reference in there. I don't know if you could put, if you yeah. put it in there before, if like the Disney hammer would come down, but like now. Well, Disney is, hammer I, always comes down, even but if it like, makes no sense. I feel like now there's like the point being just like, I am free, but the only way it can get past is as long as the animation does it in black and white. <laughs> Well, by the way, Brodsky, you know, the most free person is the one that could avoid a lawsuit from Disney. Yeah. The that's pirate. Yeah. Free yeah. Free. Oh, my God. That's what it, see. Everyone thought it meant Scantling in one piece, but that gets you arrested. The real Pirate King is the freest because they avoid lawsuits from Disney and still somehow copy their work. Anyway, what the hell were we talking about? Right, right. So Egghead is all 1920s Disney cartoon and everyone's like, what stop the pacifistas who cares why that looks like a public domain cartoon <laughs> and uh saint saturn here looking uh pensive angry i assume i mean you can't really see anything besides his beard which is flowing magnificently and kizaru literally doing the captain picard face palm <laughs> as he uh kashunks into the ground uh and emily what's next so, in this uh, next panel, Bonnie runs up to Vegapunk, who is on the ground, bleeding out. Uh, Sanji and Kuma are in the background, facing toward the action, uh, presumably guarding her while she has this moment with him. And she says, Vegapunk, come with us, they'll kill you. And then we suddenly cut away to the Iron Giant, uh, who once again hears the drums as Luffy has turned into Gear 5. And... Uh, once again, he, yeah, he lurches yeah. to life. And, uh, Superman. Yeah, we see uh, him creaking and humming to life. Can anyone do that mech sound effect, the uh, turning on? <laughs> Pretty good. It makes me think of like I an old Windows sound. computer. Yeah. Yeah, that's how, <laughs> that's how it should sound like when it turns on. Or like a Mac, the Mac startup yeah. noise is fun. Yeah. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounded like Red Robin. But, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, so Bonnie, uh, still with Vegapunk, she hears the drums as well. And uh, she seems to recognize that rhythm, says this rhythm. Uh, and we see a memory of when she was little with Kuma. And uh, um, Kuma says, uh, Nika, that's right. He's my idol. He appears from the blue with laughter and this rhythm. And we see the two of them in this cute silhouetted shot dancing to the drums. Uh, Kuma is huge, Bonnie is tiny. Uh, and they've got that uh, little bit of that pose that we, uh, the, uh, the Skype of Fire pose. Um, mm -hmm. The Nika pose. Uh, yeah, the Nika pose, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and back in the present, Bonnie looks to be in shock she is looking up at something and vegapunk looks over at her and uh then we have this beautiful shot of bonnie looking toward the sky and there is luffy in gear five in the air uh same nika pose uh as the one where he was in front of the moon uh in the uh when when he first turned into gear five and he's laughing and flying through the air uh and Vegapunk says, so you didn't realize it, Bonnie. I sh couldn't be sure until I saw it for myself. The very st same straw hat Luffy that Kuma had his eye on was Nika the sun god. And Bonnie has a tear coming uh, coming to her eye as she listened to those, dr uh, listened to those drums. And she says, huh? And uh, we see Luffy laughing, Kuma on the ground, very, uh, very badly injured. And... Uh, Vegapunk says, Kuma was right. The buster call is futile. For centuries, people all over the world have been waiting for him. Uh, we talked about the panel on the last uh, few pages ago being incomprehensible, but I love this little one with Luffy here. Um, and also, obviously, the Bonnie one. This is a so beautiful lovely. page. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. this is going to be one yeah. of those that once it, I mean, it's emotional here, but in when it appears in the anime with the music and everything, yeah. it's oh, just going to be. Yeah. Uh, the Kuma stuff that, is going to destroy. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, 
I'm very excited, and I'm sure you, I'm sure all of you are too. Um, very. Since you, you'll get to work, yeah. Um, Alex, uh, this is your page, and in more ways than one. Yeah. So uh, we um, we changed locations very slightly to the northeast coast of Egghead. Um, and just in case you forgot where we were, uh, over the uh, loudspeakers, the Marine says, We're off the northeast coast! There's an enormous ship heading our way! Uh, and we see some uh, Marines who are, uh, you know, in... Uh, they're they're uh, running around and looking pretty worried. Oh, that's definitely them, all right. I thought they fell apart over a hundred years ago, though. Should we stop? But why are they here? Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, why are they here? They say, and uh, we see the ship on the side, uh, same ship we saw earlier. Uh, you can only assume. Um, and we hear, uh, yeah, we hear the uh, the voices on the ship say, "Should we stop?" And uh, the other says, Nah, charge right through them! And uh, I, I, th- the Marines are still, uh, you know, doing what they can. Uh, they're throwing everything they got at, at this giant ship here. Um, they let loose a, a flurry of, of cannon fire. And uh, as we hear fire, we hear someone say, Blast it, why are there giants here? And... Um, uh, we see uh, the, the faces of all well, Dorian Brogy. <laughs> um, uh, why, why, why? They ask Dory. When all that happens in the world, uh, in the uh, when all that happens in the world is inevitable, Brogy. And uh, we have a great, wonderful, wonderful uh, giant panel of the two giants from Little Garden and uh, and Albaf. Dorian Brogy. Uh, they slice the the masts off of these ships with uh, practically no effort at all, uh, laying waste to the Marines. Uh, the loudspeaker says, A new state of emergency! The giant pirates have arrived! And uh, it's uh, Brogy and Dory. Brogy says, uh, ba 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 We're here for you, Straw Hat! Or should it be... Sun God! And, uh, the doom. That's the end of the chapter. That mm. Hearing you there, I'm I'm very upset. I mean, always tragic, thinking about Daisuke Gori, but, uh... I know, this, I know. Like, thinking about this, this, all of this stuff it would have been amazing, also. Well, they gotta recast him now, because I think he's about to show up in the anime. Yeah, uh, no, I'm sure they will. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I, well, I wonder if they're gonna do Jinbei's voice actor for that, too. <laughs> um, probably not, Maybe. but... Um, yeah, what a chapter. Um, I think we should probably, the, the manga's off next week, by the way. So, uh, we could all soak in, in this last page and the rest of it. Um, the, I'll, I'll go around the horn for thoughts though. Um, Emily, you want to start? I really, it's what, what you were talking about before. I am so excited for this to happen in the anime. This is, uh, such a lovely um full circle moment for bonnie um and uh such a cool moment with dorian broggy um i uh i I mean every every part of this chapter was amazing i really um in particular the moment that uh that i got to read there um with uh with bonnie realizing that nika is real and he's here um it's uh it is such a um, such a sweet, inspiring moment, and I can't wait to see what they do with that cinematically in the anime. Uh, Anthony, oh man, no, I, I agree. They um, the emotional beats that they're starting to throw here, coupled with this animation, the the brilliant how everything is so bright, and in order to make the lighting change, they have to work more with shadow. Mm-hmm. there to really emphasize that uh i think if you're just looking at it in a big overarching sense i mean this is something we didn't expect to have so much heart this kuma bonnie story and it is such a beautiful thing to get to this moment and it destroyed me when vega punk says when the world's against you uh kuma will not and not your father not that like any like kuma this man this this 
image, you know, this this icon and the fact that he seems like the f- first character in a long time that even though he has this, this tragic story, much like we have seen, uh, he might get one of the truest happy endings for himself. Like Kuma has the potential to be like, a part of me got to see the sun god Nika. A part of me got to see my daughter alive. She knows the truth. I'm, I'm out. Like this could be my final act. It's 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 a beautiful culmination here for what appeared to be at first. Eggfed seemed like oh, it's like a recap. Like we're bringing everything from the past back, and now it's like oh, we're this is endgame territory here. Uh, I'm excited to see. Uh, I hope Brooke, when they notice like hey, this drum beat is only kind of lifting up this Iron Giant. If Brooke is like guys. We all need to do this. And he, like Frankie's beating on his chest and everyone's hitting stuff and they're doing the rhythm. Like the, all the straw hats are like playing with the rhythm that they hear of Luffy's heart. So that this, you know, what if uh, Brooke can control the beast with his freaking music, like the Iron Giant? Like hmm. there's just a lot of cool stuff here that my brain's like, oh man, you know, you think really you, cool. you guess and then it's like, how are they going to beat Saturn? How are they going to? Yeah. So I, I love where this is going, man. It's, it's, it's getting so good, and I know we constantly say that, but it has to. It's keeping up. Yeah, that uh, there was something there I forgot I wanted to add, but um, well said. Uh, yeah, I, that, I do. That, hope that actually reminded me about. Uh, yeah, that reminded me of the Peter Pan stage show, or uh, or just Peter Pan the story where Tinkerbell is dead, and you need to clap to yeah. to save the fairy's life. That kind of a thing. Yeah, it just seems like now's the time going back to when everyone getting mad that Luffy's joy. He's bringing hope. That's the whole point of this. The world is supposed to be horrible, and you don't want to see... We saw Luffy be determined. You know, we've seen him when he when he fights, and he's backed in a corner, that, that determination face. But a lot of people do that on his crew, even. Like, you can see that determination in Zoro and Sanji and everyone. But the true gift is that when things are hopeless joy boy brings hope back to them and i think that that just him being joyful and like i think bonnie is going to be a great you know uh foil to that to show like her like oh, this is it this it's like meeting mickey mouse like she went to disneyland and they're like oh we don't know if we'll see him and she's like there he is putting the joy in joy boy oh god i'm, I'm so excited <laughs> um what i was gonna add is what you said that the 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 true happy ending i think i've said this on the show a few times but there was something i learned in creative writing in school that if a story starts out where everything is awful it usually ends good and vice versa um for for that character um and there is no more tragic beginning than than kuma's story and sometimes tragic continuations uh i I still don't know if Kuma is going to meet his ultimate demise here, but even if he does, I think I think you put it well that um, he's gotten to reach a lot of his goals. Um, Marianne, your thoughts? Uh, piggybacking off of that, I, I do think Kuma is probably going to die um, in this arc, but I think it is going to be a very sort of bittersweet, like he is now at rest and he no longer has to keep this fight going on. Um, it's going to be very emotional and very sad. Uh, but yeah, the chapter was great. I will admit when the first time I read through it, I think cause I read it too fast. I didn't like pick up on everything that was happening. And then I reread it and I went, wait, <laughs> there's a lot here. Like <sighs> that. I, mm, the, there's so many factions yeah. going on in from different areas and it, there's so much drawing. Yeah, then the Bonnie stuff. I've liked her since she first appeared, and finally getting to see her get a good, like, story and character development and all of that has just been, like, so great. Uh, And I feel like a lot of it is culminating kind of in this chapter with that one spread. And I don't know, it's just, it's it's good. And then seeing the giants, of course, at the end is wild. And I you forget how big they are, and you see them next to the marine ships, and it's like, oh... They're at least three times the size of a, a ship, a giant battleship. And it's, ooh, that gives me goosebumps. I love it. Yeah, you, 
you forget yeah. why they were so feared up yeah. until you see this moment. Then you're like, oh yeah, because a giant could just like knock over a ship like that Slap freaking Hokai uh, sovereignty. Just sovereignty. I was gonna yeah. say they probably could lift a ship out of the water and eat it. I'm, yeah, I'm wondering if they're there to help get uh, the 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 lab out of their egghead, oh, like the yeah. actual. If like that's what's going to happen, if they'll be like, oh. "Come on, guys!" Like, in a couple of them are are getting because that's all the information. Like, yeah, yeah. That's I'm, the I'm wondering if they're like, <laughs> like we. And got I the guess internet. if Saul Saul is one of their connections because he's still around, he's still kicking it. He's got yeah, all the knowledge of the uh, O'Hara uh, library. So I do oh, wonder, yeah. yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. something I hadn't considered. I thought this was, you know, maybe they they come to save, you know, the straw hats, but uh, well, they they well, no, they were here they for have a reason you. to to rescue yeah. the sun god. That's why he talks about the sun god. Sun god yeah. is the yeah. one who put a stop to uh, Linlin's rampage on yes. Elbeth. That's true too. Um, that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah. Mm. I always forget about. That and that's, that's why they sorted. they were all about yeah because it's just like no Lin Lin stopped because she ate everyone and then left <laughs> <laughs> she got her fill yeah that's not yeah that's not <laughs> she got her fill um yeah I I I mean Alex I I know I feel like the little garden stuff um and, and you are inexor- inexorably tied anyway but I reread through. The the la- the late egg the late egghead the late little garden stuff with the giant goldfish and all that, um and it's first of all it's such a cute little it's it's such a story of that era of One Piece but also it totally is plausible that they would be here now and formidable. Um, people talk about power scaling out there, we don't, but I know there are people out there. Um. And, but like I, I think, you know, with with everything together, it it makes a lot of sense that they are, as as Marianne said, feared, um, feared pirates here. Um, Stephen, what a thrill ride! Um, yeah, this this chapter is, was amazing, and it's it's funny because last week on the the podcast we were talking about, you know, the so. You know, One Piece, typically, okay, a jump series every week, the standard length is 19 pages. And, uh, of course, for many years, uh, One Piece matched that as well. Um, and then eventually Marine over the Ford. years. Yeah, well, Marineford, he yeah. really dipped down. But um, yeah. after the time skip, he did kind of settle in. I think when I started, there was still a year or two, at least, of full-length chapters. And then he kind of settled into 17 as his new normal um and then you know as he gets closer to taking to to the break period he kind of runs out of space sometimes runs out of time and so you get you know 15 page chapters and occasionally a 13 page chapter uh and so we started this three chapter stretch with a 15 page and then last week was a 13 page and we were like well it says there's going to be a chapter next week and so i you know i don't know and i was like man i hate to think of you know what it might look like and uh you know we talked about all of our predictions of like who okay who's they going to be who's the mysterious group coming to the island and and what else are we going to see what else has to happen um and this chapter came in like you know a couple hours after we finished recording so it was all super fresh in my mind and i was like okay here we go and then i look and i was like whoa 17 pages and like it looks pretty awesome i mean we did you know we identified there's some messy panels but you know, in terms of like the overall artistic, you know, value, it is a pretty sharp chapter overall, some really amazing um, scenes in particular. Um, And then just, you know, the stuff that happens in it. Uh, So many things, obviously we didn't, we did not guess the giants, which is great. You always love to be surprised by Oda, Um, but to get to see, you know, the, uh, the iron giant reacting to, um, uh, to, to Lugarth here, um starting him up <laughs> and uh the just all, all of the other stuff man so so many really cool moments happening all uh you know in a row um it was it was a real thrill ride and and he he has a very good kind of uh propulsion propulsive you know pace a, a strong momentum that just really carries you through um 
his uh you know his double page spreads and stuff uh i love that he went back to the um luffy uh you know um emily referred to it as the you know luffy in front of the moon where here it's basically just luffy in front of you know a white white space white background um in his uh kind of weird coco pelli style you know uh pose and i uh i'm so curious it's like this is completely insignificant like it doesn't really matter but i'm so curious if oda like the very first time that he drew that if he was like oh i'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna reuse this. Like this is this is gonna be like a Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, but just like the you know of Gear Five Luffy like um, framed against nothing, right? Like of just it's just him uh, with nothing behind him. And um, if he was like, I'm gonna keep doing this with Gear Five, or if he he did it once and then you know he saw the reaction that fans were having in the way that it really took on a life of its own as this very iconic kind of image and then he was like oh yeah i cooked on this one like i got to do this again um or if that was you know always part of the plan and stuff but i i love that he went back to it i thought it was a, a very impactful way to punctuate that scene of you know bonnie's um realization um that uh, this is this um you know figure this legendary figure that um, has been an important part of her her life with Kuma. Stephen, um, you know, I think years ago we discussed kind of like what's cool about Gear 2 and, and some of the specific attacks that Luffy has. And I, we were talking about how it's like the things that are really good in a Shonen series are the ones you can have fun in the playground with, you know, when you're 12. Mm-hmm. Um, and this totally feels like a fun version of that like instead of pretending you're a dragon ball z character you know charging whatever yeah Yeah, charging yeah uh here you could be gear five mika luffy dancing in the the (laughs) playground that that would have been me in the playground i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna kamehameha you well i'm gonna uh pull my legs up and over it <laughs> and then i'm going to run in the air and uh my eyes are gonna bug out and you missed me mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> oh, so it just makes it's me perfect. want to go into a bounce house and then play if yeah. they ever if they ever make the uh the one piece amusement park that's a yes. giant uh continent yeah they have the, uh, luffy's gear five bounce house for the kids <laughs> you know what, what if you're an adult and you want to go <laughs> yeah and then one for adults where you all can put yeah. on the big uh, punch gloves uh-huh. you can fight <laughs> Oh, like Love the it. Hulk, the fucking what is no, it? no, yeah, sock and boppers, sock and boppers, sock and boppers. Yeah, Heck yeah, more fun rock than em, the rock'em sock'em robots. That's a different thing. That's one. One of them is waking up right here in this chapter. Um, hmm? yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Stephen. I, I I just was thinking about that with with this and the levity mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, what a what a great thrill thrill ride, and um, you know, and it's the giants coming back to is um. I keep saying this, like especially a- after the end of uh, of Wano, but um, it really does feel like Oda is j- he's just in completely unprecedented territory where he yeah. is uh, like the the sheer length of a series like this that has a consistent and growing story and narrative, and the fact that he can he can just go back and pluck these elements from so long, you know, two decades ago. Yeah. Um, and have them still be relevant and be meaningful and not feel like a total ass pull, you know, like it's just, you know, nobody else can do this. And, um, this is just the latest, I think, move that, that cements that, um, that reputation. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Um, wonderful. I'm re- super excited. I can't wait to see what new thing he's going to do that, you know, is a, is a callback that I did not see coming and will, will completely surprise me. Um, but we'll have to wait two weeks for that. Vatsky. Uh, I will say when I got stabbed, I did gasp. <laughs> it was, that was like very audible. Um, it's it, it's like... crazy. We didn't even really talk about that happening. Oh yeah. In yeah. This chapter, <laughs> where, which is a huge moment. And it's just, that's how much happened this week. Go ahead. Um, but it kind of feels like we're getting, it's been, I feel like since last time I was on as well, like it's been this very emotional world coaster we've been on for months now with Kuma and just how, again, like it feels like it's finally kind of getting a close. And I honestly agree. Like, I, I don't think he's making, he's, 
I don't think he's making it out and he'll like survive one now if, with Vegapunk being out of the, you know, out of commission, like anyone who could fix Kuma is now not, also not making it out of this. Um, but like, it's, it feels like now we're kind of moving on to the next thing. Um, I was very excited to see the giants there. Like made me definitely think of kid, but um, <laughs> I'm so worried about killer. Let's, let's be real. I had a very lengthy discussion with someone at a cafe yesterday. Um, Murder machine killer. <laughs> you okay, wife. Brodsky? Kiss, blow a kiss to my wife. I miss him. <laughs> um, but no, like it's, I feel like it can take like a little bit of a breath, even though like a bunch of so much happened this week, but it's going to be a lot to process by the next chapter because you don't really know where it's going. Are they there to check Luffy? Are they there to protect the intelligence? Are they... What are they doing there? And they're pretty much, I feel like they're just going to backhand the Marines and we'll get rid of that chapter very quickly. And they might just grab Saturn and squish him like a bug. Um, so we'll see. That would be <laughs> poetic justice, yeah, as, great, as yeah. uh, Saturn did mention. I did say last week, because Saturn was saying how uh, literally, you know, ironic this was. It's like, oh, you're fucked. This is not going to happen. Um, sorry, go ahead, Bosky. Yeah. No, no, no. That's that's pretty much where I'm at now. It's like I have more questions now, but I can wait for the answers because I know they'll they'll it'll unfold. Because nothing I think of, Oda will do. <laughs> that's I, that's good storytelling. It is. I, I do want to say, um, you know, Brad, Brodsky was talking about, you know, what what exactly are the the giants here for and stuff. And I did I I forgot to mention that I really liked the. Um, uh, I don't know if it was intentional or or not. I I would like to believe that it is um the chapter title on your side obviously you know is a direct reference to what vegapunk says in his um monologue to bonnie but also you know hey who who is showing up here and what are they doing they're on your side i thought that was some night nice, some neat resonance there yeah um with the giants do you think there's a chance that one of the uh the vegapunk satellites like sent a message out to the giants and that's why they know to come in the first place i well, i they, I, they... Yeah, Alex. Sorry, yeah. I'll feel that. And they mentioned the paper at the beginning, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think I, yeah. I, I was going to mention this earlier. I since Egghead, I think is, uh, or, or Albaf is the closest island to Egghead, right? Is that that has been established? Yes. I think so. Yeah, I think it's very close. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't take very long for them to to show up because I think last week we were talking about like. Oh, well, who Distances, could it be? Yeah. Could it be, like, yeah, could it be mm. the Grand Fleet? Could it be the Revolutionaries? And they're like, oh, no, well, they're still in Kamabaka, and it wouldn't take them, you know, it, would, it wouldn't take, it would take them quite a long time to get to, to Egghead, probably, and, you know, we don't know where the Grand Fleet is, and it could be them. Um, I, I am so shocked that we didn't even mention Elbaf yeah. as a possibility. Mm. Yeah, because you think <laughs> yeah, Shanks has that on lockdown, so you're like, nah, <laughs> nothing's getting that's, in that's or out of why Egghead. I, so we did or, bring up Shanks, Elbaf. and we're... Yeah. And we're like, that's not going to happen here, which is true. It didn't. But yeah, we forgot about he, the rest of them. Do you think he could have been the one like, did, did Dory and Brogy come straight from their fight? Or do you think they went to Elbaf to regroup, saw Shanks there, you know, Vivre cards going off and they're like. So, so their so duel ended two years ago and Oimo and Kashi got them? Is that? Mm -hmm. remember, remember Oimo and Kashi got them. Yes. The they, they brought them over to Elbaf. They oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Because yeah. Usopp told them, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, where yep. they were. Yeah. But I'll, I'll add, I reread, so it was chapter 1076 and 1079, um, where we see the giants and, and Shanks. Mm. Shanks talks about how this was just supposed to be a pit stop, Elbaf, and it's pretty clear since he said it, he was going after the One Piece and he was collecting things, and he specifically told Kid, look, either leave your road poneglyphs or I'll, you know, cut you in half which he does the latter and also the former um sorry brodsky about killer um <laughs> Nothing. but but anyway i so they they help <clears throat> sorry i'm going going through uh adolescence here Puberty. uh yeah that's the word uh so they're going <laughs> the when they were leaving they did ask for assistance from dorian brogy but or if not ask, at least received. Um, but it was never made clear that they were going in the same direction, which is, I think, just something I assumed because they were together there. Why wouldn't they be together later? 
Um, and you do see Oimo and Kashi in 1076, so I wonder if they are also on board this ship. Um, anyway, talk about that more later. Alex, I want to hear your thoughts. Okay, a lot to talk about. Great chapter. Uh, a thrill ride, as Steven said. That's a great great way to put it. Um, I already mentioned a second ago that, uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting these guys to show up, and I'm I'm incredibly happy uh, that they did. Um, of course, like, yeah, how, how are the Straw Hats getting to Elbaf? Well, why not ride uh, on a gigantic ship over uh, over there? Um, so, awesome. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a direct route. Now, uh, I guess the question here is, um, what's Saturn going to do? <laughs> I mean, uh, Saturn... He's all on his own now. Like, I mean, the, mar- the Marines are... I mean, Kizaru and the Marines are getting... Sorry, I just had a destroyed. thought. What if he gets Buster called? Because it hasn't been Buster called off and... Sorry, that was bad at me. Um, and well, everyone else is gone. No, that was good. <laughs> all their yeah. ships are destroyed, though. Yeah. No, Kuma oh, you're like, right. Uh, you're right. You're right. Who's, yeah. who's Buster and the calling? the Giants. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Sorry. Who's Buster calling I, who here? Yeah, yeah. That's the question. So I, I thought a lot about, um, even before this chapter, I was I thought a lot about Kizara this week. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I'm sort of, I sort of have a weird working theory that doesn't, it doesn't hold too much water, and it's also a, uh, you know, like, it's incomplete because we know so little information, but uh, Vegapunk was talking about how devil fruit powers are sort of the manifestation of dreams and desires, and uh, it's sort of funny that, you know, even though Bonnie was given this power as a child, her I feel like her desire was to get older so that she could get better and go on trips with her father, Right. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, that's, that's probably some coincidence. Um, but then I also think about how, like, this is the first time that we see Kizaro actually sort of in his facial, facial expressions coming at like a crossroads as to what he is going to do next morally. And yeah. it's to either, you know, do I protect, uh, you know, do I do my job and protect, you know, the highest authority in the world or, uh, you know, do I, um, do I give Luffy a bunch of food so he can, you know, escape and, 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 you know, I get when the getting's good. And, you know, yeah. as soon as the world I, government looks like they're coming up behind, I'm out of here. Yeah. Exactly. I think we said that. I think we said that last time too. And I yeah. And, and I wonder, and I do wonder if Kizaru has a, uh, you know, Kizaru's relationship with Saturn is that of scientific and also one of onus in that, like, so I, I think about, uh, often Oda's drawings of, you know, the characters as children. And we've seen the admirals as, as kids. And uh, uh, Kizarro, or Borsalina rather, in, in particular, is an interesting one because he's sitting, like, you know, at a little at a little desk with a little lamp. And he's, like, really marveling at, at, at how it glimmers. And I wonder if, like, you know, that was his dream and that was his desire as a kid. Oh, I wish I could shine as brightly as this lantern. And maybe... Uh, I I am, you know, I'm positing this. I don't, you know, who knows if it's if any if it's anything, but maybe Saturn is the reason that he has his powers and maybe he feels like he owes Saturn at least something there. Uh seeing that, you know, Saturn is a scientist, has the ability to uh, you know, uh extract the power from devil fruits in, in liquid form or whatever and, and and give them to you or whatever. But uh, I, I was just thinking about, you know, what Vegapunk had said, desires via, you know, vis-a-vis powers, and um, now I'm wondering if, you know, this is sort of uh, the, for Kizaru, uh, the uh, the other side to, you know, the, the ironic, like, genie wish thing, right? I wish I could glimmer for the rest of my life. Like, I wish I could be that sparkly. Uh yes, but you know one day you'll have to pay a terrible price for it or something. In addition Monkey's to Paul, yes, yeah, yeah. In addition Monkey to the no Luffy's swimming, Paul. Thing. Ah! Yeah. yeah. So I I've I've been thinking about Kizaru a lot this week, and I think that you know this this theory of mine might might hold water at some point. At the very least, the relationship between Kizaru and, and Saturn, because I think that at some point we're we're going to see a reckoning there. Um, but I needed to get that out there in the ether. The panel where Vegapunk gets uh. It gets eviscerated is very uh like 
it almost for a second looked like a fake spoiler type of image, like something that you would see like, you know, a couple of yeah. years ago, like, oh, look who died this week. And uh, look who got stabbed by a spider leg. <laughs> Yeah, and it's kind of um, it's kind of jarring because he's such a goofy looking character, like yeah. one of the goofiest characters we've seen in a long time. And uh, you know, what is if Vegapunk does die here? It's very possible. What does that mean for the satellites? I thought yeah. about that. Do they live? Um, uh, that's they true, do, right? Like, so I think I I think that so we don't really have an answer to that. I yeah, I I do think that <clears throat> I do think that perhaps they live, but then they have to deal with the fact that one of them is inherently evil, one of them is inherently greedy, and then there's the other two. Uh, I still don't think he's going to die. I feel like this was more a, like something that had to happen story-wise. Uh, sure, like, but... He can't just get away with that and not get stabbed in yeah. the chest. Came, you know? like but I, d- I forget who brought it up. Marianne, it might have been I you so. uh, about how, you know, well, you take out Vegapunk and you take out the, the the one person who could possibly repair Kuma. That's true too. Uh, uh, now I'm also thinking about Frankie in this instance because mm-hmm. in the last couple of chapters Frankie's gotten uh, blasted to shit a lot. Uh, yeah. Even in this, he even got one. Uh, yeah, but he always looks okay after. It doesn't like yeah, look like he has fine. any issue after. Yeah, but, like, but I feel like there. I also feel like, and yeah. I've I've been complaining about this that this is you know a missed opportunity for Frankie to get some upgrades and maybe this is the next step. For Frankie, I, uh, you know, I am willing. Frankie only gets time. updates when he is eviscerated and yeah. burnt, uh, and has a tiger thing on him. I am I willing to bet that when they go to Egghead, that both Frankie and the Sunny are going to get some upgrades with the remaining Vegapunks. I think so. Well, yeah. as long as I'd like that, the Egghead's still there. Well, yeah, I think I think it depends. Uh, whatever happens, I do think that you know. A few of these Vegapunk satellites will be joining the Straw Hats and Elbaf. I don't know if the Stella will. Um, I don't know if Kuma will. I do wonder if there's a way to put Kuma, like Kuma's brain, inside the Sunny, like oh, uh, like uh, the what the Phoebe uh, Waller Bridge r- robot and Solo, like connected to the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> could you could you put the Sunny as the Iron Giant's head? Ooh, oh God! I even talked about I... the Iron Giant yet. Yeah, we haven't like... talked about that yet. Uh, God, there's another lot, another piece. Chapter. There's a lot of pieces that were set up, and now they're. I thought this was to, just one piece starting to move. Hey. I know. I mean, Nika activates the the, the robot. <laughs> that, that was deserved. The thumbs yeah. from Anthony. So uh, anyway, a lot's a lot's happening. A uh, lot's going to happen. Um, but I I think the the big thing to to note here is that uh, Saturn it's it's Saturn basically against everything else that's happening on Egghead. Um, and uh, I guess Lucci, wherever he is. Oh yeah, beat <laughs> up by Zoro and Jinbei. Jinbei, yeah. yeah, and York. Where's York? Who's right. watching York? Yeah, been, where's my favorite? Yeah, who's watching York? I, I, th- it, it, there's definitely it's. This is one of the chapters where like we've had again, again, like the last few weeks. It's been kind of just like Kuma focus, but now that we're back, yeah, yeah. Oda just like kind of slapped us in the face, being like, "Here's everything," and we're like, yeah. "All right, I need you to slow down." I'm 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 sure soon we're going to see the Blackbeard pirates again. Yeah, uh, I'm there. I'm scared as to what's going to happen with them. Yeah. Uh, because uh, also, hey, if if uh, if the Stella dies, that devil that devil fruit power's got to go somewhere. We it should not be anywhere near that island. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, what if Frankie gets it? Oh God, it's not Frankie oh, Frank- too. <laughs> Oh, Frankie with or, a giant uh, head. Robin? Well, I guess he's Robin a with a giant head. Kuma. Well, I guess Kuma's it, power, but it also shows like, up anywhere on the world. Kuma's so you, power you have too, Kuma's yeah. power, and then the Stellas. Yeah, we have two Devil Fruit powers that are on the verge yeah, of but being exhausted. But with uh, Punk, <clears throat> sorry, with Punk Hazard. Remember when they killed the what the hell was Slimy? Smiley. 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 Uh, Smiley. Smiley. Uh, there, Ed, nice. Um, it went to the closest regular fruit. Remember, that's how that. Yeah, kinda, but um, we also know that the Blackbeards have a way of getting powers. That yes, really... that's yeah. We said we, that'll be a, a discussion. I have my theories on that discussion for another day. Yeah. yeah, I'm done. But all these pieces that are on the board, crazy. We didn't talk about the Iron Giant. That one's I'm. Oh. Yeah, Ed, why don't you talk about the Iron Giant? 
Well, the Iron Giant is activated by Nika, so it makes me think that this is sort of the remnant of an ancient technology that fought on the side of good against the world government in the Void Century. That's what I the, mean, I mean, they did, he did try they're and a, uh, destroy they're a super, they're, 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 they're a, they're a um, possibly a kind of cursed super weapon. In the past, I've compared them to the god warriors from Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, if anyone's... Mm-hmm. I assume we've all seen that. Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, it could cause, you know, wreak major havoc, and it's about it's about the size of uh, of you know Dorian Brogi. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of options there. But uh, I just love the way that the this whole chapter was sort of orchestrated around the that sort of that that turn of you know, everything is hopeless, and then the pacifistas like well, it was it was foreshadowed last chapter with what Vegapunk said there, what the Stella said, but. Just to see it here, and uh, to you know, to give Bonnie that power, Bo- the power of Bonnie's voice is what reached the pacifistas to counteract their orders. So she's act- she is actually the hidden top level of the whatever the authority hierarchy for these, yeah, you know, for the ones who all look like Kuma. So uh, that was really cool of uh, of Stella to make sure that that happened. You know, yeah, you know, being thinking that far ahead about sort of you know the ironic, not I guess. It was weird that they called it ironic, I think, last week, but uh, uh, just the poetic justice of I her think, voice yeah, getting that's... getting through to the pacifistas and turning this whole situation around on the government. And uh, it does it does put Kizaru in a, in a weird position because he's had this uh, relationship with Saturn and Sentomaru and Bonnie and Kuma. They've all sort of they all sort of bonded, really. They are all together in, at a certain point in time. Uh probably brought them closer together but he's had to sort of fight he's had to fight against them but now he might be you know we've always gotten the sense that he was just this order following guy or he sort of go with the flow kind of guy but no maybe the maybe the this is the nika is the tide of uh you know the tide of the world going against uh going against the government so this represents sort of that turning point um you know this this could be the uh this is really the uh, inciting incident, sort of, for the rest of the, uh, the rest of rest of One Piece here. Uh, it's the final showdown between the forces of freedom and the forces of oppression, uh, between Luffy, Nika, and the government. And uh, I-, I wonder. I mean, Saturn is he going to like warp out of there, or is he going to? Uh, he's going to try and fight. You there know. are too many elders. We can kill one now. It's fine. Please. Right. <laughs> yeah. One yeah. is a character. Now we have to kill him. So. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's, um, I love the, I love the way Nika fights. Like, Saturn is this sort of super evil, you know, swirly black character with, <laughs> you know, his, his circle and his, like, weird dark aura around him. Like, he's got the same sort of, uh, dark, like, dark cloud aura that Luffy has on the, the light side. So it's, a, it's a very, uh, you know, very yin and yang sort of. Not a uh, not not shades of gray here. He's evil and there, and there's good. He's putting the devil and in devil fruit. Decided. Right. Yeah. But uh, and and the giants are here. So I mean, we've I think people have been speculating from the beginning of this arc that we're going to go to Elbaf next, and I think that is pretty much a foregone conclusion. And maybe we're leaving this island sooner than I thought. I think I had like the highest guess last we did the re guesses. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got a. We got to do uh, that. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't mind being wrong. Again, this was done exclusively to make a fool of me, and I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's the whole point of the podcast. Um, <laughs> I'll make it quick since my voice isn't going to let. Oh, me I just, just want to say long. for people oh, who Ed, who don't know. Uh, so I just, I just I, I point this out. Whenever Dorian Brogy appear, these are references to Japanese pro wrestling of the eighties that Oda is a big fan of. So that is. Um, uh, Dory and he has the Terry sword. This is based on the Funk brothers, Dory Funk and Terry Funk. And Brogy is uh, he's got the Bruiser sword, so that's Bruiser Brody, the wrestler. So it's all. And actually, there's also a giant named Stanson after Stan Hansen. So a lot of the giants are named after wrestlers. That's speaking so of s- speaking yeah. of the Funk brothers, did one of them dream of being someone else's jacket? <laughs> I, the, the, the... He's used that one twice. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I just want to chime in really quick i i posted in the chat the i found the picture of kizaru as a child and um uh it, it what you said you mentioned you, when you brought nika into it 
Uh, and it also makes me just think of, I don't know, like perhaps this is a Nika related thing too for Kizaru. Maybe he also dreamt of seeing well, Nika. I mean, he uh, he would have talked, well, extensively to Kuma and Bonnie probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, they, uh, did they all did the, the dance, dance together. Yeah. They, they all yeah. did it. That's right. So you do the dance, you you become part of the tribe. Um, add, add anything else? No, that was it. I just wanted to add the thing about the wrestlers. Before you go, um, I, I gotta I gotta bounce. Yes, on this Anthony, one. Uh, where could where could people find you if they uh, if I'm, they would I'm, like to? I'm still hanging out on Twitter uh, right now. I'm I'm freelance uh, directing and acting and doing all of that. Uh, we've gotten one piece to a great spot. Uh, I wanted to say before I left because last time we were under that horrible horrible uh, strike going on. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the actor strike. But I wanted to say while we're on here that I adore the cast and crew and the adaptation of the live action they had a monster of a job and Mm -hmm. they had one of the highest success rates on i think any sort of uh thank you kura for passing by uh for uh getting getting that on there and yeah my cat passed by and uh also like taz skyler as sanji like what they're doing with sanji is amazing like I think every everyone's doing a great job, but watching Taz as Sanji and his story and all that, I'm like, damn it, am I a, am I a Sanji fan now? Like it, they he, he was my personal favorite. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, he was great. They killed it, and and the job they had, and and Emily and I have talked about this on the show show before, but like adapting and doing that, and Stephen, you put it great. Like there's so much around adaptation that everyone is coming at it from a place of love and perspective. And it can be hard when someone is so ingrained in it. I know I would get that way too. You'd, you'd stare at a scene and be like, this is the most important scene of that episode. And by the end of it, you're like, Oh, I forgot to fill out around it. What happened? Oh no. Uh, but they, they came out swinging great job. Uh, I can't wait for season two. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, no, I've just been, been online doing that. Uh, I've got some uh, really cool directing gigs for some games and stuff that I've been doing. Uh, one of which, uh, the sparking that just uh, the Dragon Ball sparking got to do some directing on that. So nice, very nice. cool. Uh, but hopefully in the future, I mean, they have the One Piece coming out. That's Man, true. I, I'd I'd love mm-hmm. to get in on some of that <laughs> in the future. That, I'm very excited for that. Uh, competition for can only yeah, it can only make things better. And I think to get a a, a yeah. very one to one to kind of read through and be like, yeah, and have both copies to say, I have yeah. my my Lord of the Rings extended edition and then my movie edition for when I need doing to. it for Marianne, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but no, uh, thank you all for having me. I'm I'm always willing to come back. You guys are all great, great. Like this one talking one piece is the best, and I wish we had more it time. Is. Uh, uh, yeah, agreed. So, Marianne, great to see you. Stephen yeah. Brodsky, uh, Alex, Edward, thank you all. Zach, great to see you again. And Emily, good luck. I know what you have to do this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> of course. Emily, I, I know you have to head out too, I think, right? I do, um, yeah. I do you want to let people should. know where to find find you and what you're up to? Yes, yeah. Um, so you can find me on uh, on Twitter as well, uh, at Emily J. Fajardo, Uh I'm also uh, on an Instagram I don't use at the same handle. Um, and uh, But uh, mainly you can hear um, what uh, what both Anthony, Anthony and I have worked on on Crunchyroll. Uh, the most recent batch just came out uh, on Crunchyroll like mid-January. Uh, and uh, so we are up to episode 1048 in dub. Um, and that most recent batch is my favorite one we've released so far. It is such a good batch. Um Great episodes that Emily directed. I'm sorry to yeah, cut you so off, but Emily Emily, directed. <laughs> <laughs> Emily kicked ass. She got to do the the Brooke and the Black Maria clutch, and they rock. Oh, yes, that's, yeah. No, I could talk Good for episodes. three hours about those episodes. Um, and uh, Anthony did such a beautiful job with uh, um, Jean Bay versus Who's Who. Uh, there's so well, many different episodes yeah. in that. Yeah. Um, so definitely check those out. Uh, it is such a such a fun one and there is so much good ahead we have lots and lots of good uh good fun moments coming and um uh all the uh the really heavy hitters are ahead uh we have your five baby your five yeah, is, I was gonna is say. coming up yeah um within uh we're not we're not sure exactly what the uh what the release schedule will be on that it's been about once a month 12 episodes 
Um, I forget what episode number that 1070? 1071. Okay. That's crazy. It's still so far off. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I always think that's earlier, but yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, very soon and we're uh, we're excited to share all of that with you guys. We're excited to see it. That's going to be... I hope Colleen's okay. Um, <laughs> you did great. It's She's amazing. amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure. I, I don't doubt it. Um, it's just a lot of laughing. I, they, I remember they... I'll make this a quick anecdote. Um, they had the they had an interview with Mayumi Tanaka like right as Gear Five was coming out, and they're like, "Oh, I feel really bad because she's gonna have to really laugh." And it's like she did way more than we expected her to do, and like it's like I, I'm sure Colleen will be in that boat as well. We we made sure not to oversell this, but Emily and I were so like, "Oh, we can we can go more with what Colleen like in the sense of." You know, you're playing with different actors, so you know how to, like, we never worked with Mayumi. I don't know how to push Mayumi. I know what Colleen can do. So when yeah, we yeah. had that in there, like Emily and I figuring out these moments could be this and that. Like, I, I feel the same way, like, when we adapted Zoomin and all of that, how it's just yeah, like, oh God. It, 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 it feels like it is the truest sense of what we can bring to the English dub right there. And it's so right. cool to see that. I'm, Adaptation. I'm so stoked adaptation it's all yeah. about adaptation uh so yeah thank you anthony and emily for coming on uh thank you. Hope, hope to have you back really soon yeah thank you it's always more having... one piece yeah. always and yeah. thank you for all you guys do too for oh no thank you guys killing it yeah you guys too um <laughs> i'm gonna hop back to the manga and say my thoughts i guess <laughs> um what was I going to say? I, I think I think Steven might have been the one to mention how crazy cool it is that you could pluck a character from 2000, 2001. When were those? When, when did Dorian Brogy come about? Um, just crazy. Did anyone notice? Um, I believe that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brogy's uh, hat has crescent moons. Or is this just my... Uh, uh just my obsession it's um, moon boy he's yeah, back yeah, moon boy is back <laughs> moon boy is back um i just am so excited to have the giants in the story here i think as ed said you know next island's elbeth let's bring it here let's, let's bring it to egghead um i think as we the giants seem integral in the whole void century stuff especially in preserving that history as we saw they were at ohara uh, fishing out the books uh mm -hmm. saul obviously um like it might not have been historically part of their heritage I, maybe it is but it certainly is in the present day um i i think their connection to the sun god particularly with what was mentioned with uh linlin's story is just fascinating and and I, I think we kind of mentioned this but they're there because this is really they had only just seen luffy's wanted poster and this was the first place he was confirmed to be um after wano oh um, right and that's the only reason yeah, that's i think why all of these things are converging here and that's specifically they mentioned the newspaper so I, it makes complete sense um, this doesn't feel out of left field considering when I read it, I'm like, holy shit, I did not expect that. Um, and I really, really did not. Um, what a great surprise. Like I got chills rereading it here too. And I got chills watch, uh, reading it for the first time. It's not just because of Alex's fantastic and on the nose impressions. Um, please take a bow, but it, it's also, just because these, the, I, I, I am actually someone who really likes Little Garden, and I really enjoy the Giants generally. Uh, the connection to Usopp certainly, but I, I, I feel like that is such a cool well that we've seen so little from, um, and that Oda has clearly been itching to talk about, and and, and to draw for decades. Um, so cool, so cool to see that. Um, the 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 giant robot uh i i mean we've been saying this the whole time like is obviously gear 5 influence 
I went back. Chapter ten sixty seven is is when we got the backstory to this to this robot, and I think I've read this before, but the this legendary Iron Giant, as Vega Punk calls him, uh, built over nine hundred years ago, but two hundred years ago attacked Sacred Mary Joa. Um, no one understood why, and they and there was only no damage because it ran out of energy. Um. And it was beyond anything science could comprehend, according to Vegapunk. Um, and they, and the world government ordered it be torn down and destroyed, but obviously Vegapunk did not listen to that. Um, a good hint there that Vegapunk does not always follow orders. Um, I genuinely wonder what happened 200 years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, 900 years ago, we know the previous iteration of Joy Boy um, existed. Uh, whatever that might be, I, I assume related to... He the went to Fishman from, Island. And he went. we know he apologized for something. Right. Um, and also had some sort of connection with Poseidon, right? I, I think... I think... Or the former... Well, the, the former Poseidon. The, mm-hmm. Whoever yeah, the former. she was. Yeah. Um, or he. Or they. We really know nothing about Poseidon. Um or you know whatever uh i i think it's super there there are like so many egghead is one of those arcs that feel like a whirlwind every week when you're reading it but things have been actually super intricately laid and um fit together in such an interesting and and poignant way that i mean this arc i really look forward to marathoning it once it's done because I feel like sitting here today, it is both super cohesive, super kinetic, and chaotic. It, it feels marine furnish in its scope. In, and we're obviously not at the end here. I mean, this is obviously just a stepping stone toward the end. Um, like, Oda, I think, has really achieved something different in this, in that it's like both a reunion of all these characters, but also just done with so much heart and um, and surprise. Um, I hope Vegapunk's okay. I think I last week I talked about how much I love Stella, Vegapunk Stella. Uh, Stella! Someone should have yelled that <laughs> um, when, when he got skewered. But I, I hope he's okay. I, I do really love his character. I certainly flawed, but I think that's what makes him interesting. And I'm really disappointed that no one said on the last page that, oh, they might be giants. What? Coming, that's coming crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, because mm-hmm. I've been cooking that pun all day, and I've had nowhere to throw it properly. Um, so, so does that mean the sun god is a massive incandescent gas? Yes. Yes. <laughs> wow. And and Dr. Vegapunk's first name is Worm. Huh? Uh, it's all connected. Any others here? No, but he is and a real doctor. He is a real doctor, but they call him Dr. Worm. Not um, a real worm, though. No, he's not a real worm. Um, it's kind of the opposite. And also, did you know Egghead used to be called Constantinople? Wow, um, that's crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> Alex missed all my They Might Be Giants references. but oh, damn it. That aside, do you have any <laughs> other puns that you could use there? Zach's like, I have to get them all in all at once. Yeah, I is this the? Uh, do we do episode titles already? No, we're just talking. Um, no, Uh-oh. I was going through my thoughts, and I, I had that pun I was sitting on. Anyway, it might be giants. That's good. Thank you. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm ruining yes. the chances of this. I didn't even pick. think of that. Uh, yeah, great chapter. I am really looking forward to next time, and I have no fucking idea what's going to happen. Um, I like that. Oh, I like that we're kind of in an unknown now. Yeah. I, I do want to say how emotionally poignant that page that I think Ed read, the the Kuma will always be on your side, is just so yeah, cool. So and nice. yeah. and amidst the utter chaos and destruction that the Kuma is wreaking onto the Marines, it's just chef's kiss stuff. We, like, this is, we, what a great chapter. Did we talk about how, like, when there's that shot of Kuma with that Nika page, and you have that little, like, that little... 
Like right uh, by like right by his head. There's a little, little shock mark. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which I is did... weird because on the previous panel we see him, he's sitting up, um, like at the top oh, right true. corner. Of so that I guess page. he's like looking up then. I, I just oh, had a, 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 yeah, a that's thought. probably what he's doing. Yeah. Is this is this the first time Bonnie has seen the pacifistas? I can't. I'm trying no, to it can't. No. It can't have been. Because of the and, cop. And the remember weird... the cop pacifistas? Yeah. Uh, and she, yeah. she, and she like, didn't and say. And Shabandi, too. Yes. And she didn't say, yeah. Daddy, stop, to be fair. Yeah. Like, she didn't say to stop. She didn't give yeah, any I, I guess, like, that's maybe <laughs> she what she like, whispered. Is, she, like, yeah, specific. she's like, don't hurt. Don't hurt. Don't hurt them. Let let them murder me. Um, don't hurt I think yeah, maybe no, there had to be, like, some specific trigger words. That's what Atlas whispered, maybe. Yeah. No, no, Atlas whispered to say what Bonnie said. said. It took yeah. me a few reads to, to get that, but to say, well, to give an order. Yes. And, like, she didn't. Yeah. Why would she give a pacifista in order? There's no reason. Don't shoot us. Help us escape this island. There you go. That's an order. Um, and it had the concentric circles, as Stephen mentioned. Any any final thoughts uh, on this chapter? I will say for this, I've been thinking about it. This chapter in particular is what has made Egghead make sense for me as a whole. Like, it brings mm. everything together. It brings yeah. together the Nika stuff, the Kuma and Bonnie stuff, the, like, Vegapunk and Kizaru a little bit, and, like, the giants coming in. It just, I don't know, before I was kind of like, I don't know where Egghead is really going. I know where it's going now. Like, oh, well, I don't, but, like... If no, that makes but, sense, like yeah. It, it, yeah. it feels like a, it feels like an arc. Now. The cohesion of it, yeah, yeah. Like, I, yeah, I get it too. I, I, and especially with all the stuff that happened around the world, which is super crucial to what's happening here. Sorry, my voice is gone now. Um, super crucial to what's happening here, but it felt so f- a far, literally geographically and story wise, but really coming together here. We didn't. The one thing I want to talk about. Sorry that I forgot. Saturn must die. Yes. And I, if I, again, squish, squish, I think that's perfect. Um, I think we talked about Kizaru, the opportunist. Um, I think the reason he is not going to turn against them up to this point is because he get killed by all of them, and like he doesn't want to die. Who wants to die? But I also um, like. I think too with Kizaru. I... No, someone says both Kizaru is like just him saying being like it won't hurt is like because he does care and like he yes. would make it yes quit and like he is having a moral dilemma. He's life. having like he has to do his job or else what else is he? I, I don't know if I'm. You can't go dilemma. against like Saturn or like the these like top people and like. Well, it's like, just he's he's is he's in a rock and a hard place, uh, but yeah. one of the hard places pays his bills and uh, will really murder him, so he's got to go for the rock. Um, Never play if he doesn't do it, someone else will too. Kind yeah, of thing. that's true too. Um, he's like, okay, at least I'll make it painless when I split you in half with this laser. Um, <laughs> whatever, we'll see. The Oda's very clearly setting up him up for. Um, I don't know if redemption's the word, but certainly a face turn. I believe is the rest he of might the disappear. Um, okay, I'm gonna wrap up the manga there. I'm sure we'll get into more in the piece together right after these messages. This is the Double Anime Recap for episodes 1091 and 1092. I'm your host, Sam, and today with me, we have none other than Ed. It's me! Yes, uh, a, a, an auspicious opening to Egghead. Although, I guess, I mean, with the new opening and the ending are some of the most fun I've had with the anime in, in a long time. So, every mm-hmm. time I watch an episode, I get to see that, so I'm always happy. Yes, the first of these two episodes that we're talking about today is 1091, Brimming with the Future, an adventure on the island of science. And uh, we open last, uh, the episode before this, we were just introduced to this uh, hot lady woman named Vegapunk, uh, who may not be, the ve- you know, it may not be cut and dry who the, who Vegapunk is or, or whomst of Vegapunk is. That's that's the plural of who. I love how colorful the Vega Force is in the uh, in the anime. Love the color scheme. Uh, we have Frankie just throwing accolades at Vegapunk 
being like, oh, man, I've read all your stuff. I'm your biggest fan. I have all your albums. I raided your lab. I raided your lab. Uh, Usopp has stars in his eyes because of the big giant robot. Uh, Sanji and Brooke have hearts in their eyes uh, because she's a pretty woman. But Robin is sus about the whole Vegapunk thing because she's never heard of Vegapunk being a woman. She's like, I think I would have heard about this. You also seem like you're a little bit younger than I would have imagined. This genius scientist who's been around for however many years. Um, and uh, Lilith is... is uh, the, the character we will, ne- we will soon know as Lilith uh, summons her sea beast weapons, which is like a bunch of like cyborg uh, sea kings, I guess. Like there's like a lion one and a bear one, a giraffe, etc. And uh, yeah, we get the the formal title card. She's she's punk number two, Lilith, aka the evil. <clears throat> and there's like a just a you know blatant DBZ scouter sound effect as she's receiving a call on her her uh, earpiece. Yeah, that toy sound effects receiving... library is um, it's very consistent. <laughs> yeah, and uh, she is. Receiving a call from an, seems to be another Vegapunk named Shaka, who's a cool looking uh, Daft Punk looking guy. I I was a little like taken off guard by how much his voice is, just like just some guy. Like it's it's not like particularly like deep or or serious sounding. He's just kind of very normal yeah, and, and uh, calm. Didn't make much of an impression, honestly. I'm sure we'll see more of him uh, later on, but uh, he's not Shaka the Great. He's just Shaka the Good. Yeah, he has the kanji for good on the back of his jacket uh, to indicate where he might uh, where he might fall. Sorry, spoilers. And <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's warning Vegapunk like, hey, look at that that green hair guy. Look at that uh, the that dark haired woman. They're 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 quite big deals. They could easily snap you in half. They're way stronger than you. Don't underestimate them. Um, and and Lilith seems very like surprised by this. Uh, but Zoro's you know making demands of of her. She's like, hey, take take us to your leader or whatever you, it is you do around here. And uh, Shaka's kind of urging her like, yeah, let, let them in. Let them have what they want. Because I, I am interested in them, and I do want uh, to to meet them face to face. And as you get his formal title card, he's Punk Number One, Vega Punk Shaka the Good. Uh, Luffy and Jimbe and Chopper and Bonnie are you know not making Bohi. their way through the the sewers. Yeah, not Bohi, um, or 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 Boogie or whatever he calls her. Yeah, he's. Um, he, I, I love the way he sort of stutters, and he's like taken aback by, uh, you know, Bonnie's very stern with him. Yeah, she wants something to. She's got business with this Vegapunk person, and uh, Luffy and Jimbe are are asking her about that. She's like, if depending, it's like I have something I want to ask him, and depending on his answer, I'll kill him. Um, and we find out that. Uh, her father, once upon a time, was turned into a cyborg by Vegapunk. And uh, we're, we can read between the lines there on who that might be. Uh, yeah, Luffy, <laughs> Luffy calls her bogey again, and she gets mad, and he apologizes. And then they take the ladder up out of the sewer. And uh, like as they're coming out of the sewer, it's like, like the sunlight beaming down. Bonnie sees a very strange silhouette. It doesn't quite look like a human person, but it's got kind of hair. It's got kind of a, a, a penis shape to it. Uh, she's like, oh, is that who I'm looking for? I, just, I love the, the, the way of him staring at like the entire Egghead city. The way they mm-hmm. do this sort of montage thing with like the, the shifting panels or the panels on the screen or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Yeah, that, that, that was fun. The marvels of Egghead. Yeah, they're entering the futuristic-looking city, and uh, Bo- you know Bonnie makes a, like a comment in her head, 
Like, like, oh, I, I did meet Sabo at Mary Joa. Like, should I bring that up now? Is, is would that be awkward? <laughs> but the, the, yeah, they're very um, they're, they're, thinking they're about Luffy. Quickly distracted by uh, wonders of science. Yeah, there's a big gold uh, Jetsons world now, <laughs> and we got a big uh, dragon thing and a big robot thing, and they're having a like a, a Pacific Rim showdown in the sky. Straight out of Gigantor. And, and uh, that brings us to the eye catch of the episode. We come back from the commercial break, and Luffy is gum gum rocketing himself into the fight because how could he not? And he gets eaten by the dragon. But it's okay, because the dragon is just a hologram, and he just goes right through it. And they're like, what? What's? How, how does that happen? And then they, you know, Bonnie and Luffy and Chopper, the, the grown children that they are, they are tempted by and, and drawn in by a bunch of ice cream that they jump into, and then they kind of like they they just kind of like repeatedly like keep jumping through all this like food and sweets and and uh ice cream and whatnot taking taking a while to like put two and two together that the food is also a hologram and luffy's first poor, instinct poor is to luffy. think that he is a ghost and he is dead and that is why he can't eat food <clears throat> and then I mean, the one person who him. loves eating more than luffy probably is money mm mm-hmm. mhm and Jinbei has to, has to assure him, like, no, it's clear that just it's, it's the food that's not real. It's, it's, you're here. You're still alive. It's the food that's fake. And and this is clearly just, like, the worst thing that's ever happened to Luffy. Now we get to discover a vending machine culture. <laughs> um, Jinbei notices that the island is unexpectedly warm, especially compared to how cold it was coming in. And uh, some some strange giant girl with like uh, half white, half pink hair and like cow ears and a tail. Uh, just kind of w- and a tail. It's like like walks in. He's like, ah, yes, I see you have uh, are appreciating my my you know the fruits of my labor. And like Luffy is like, whoa, she's bigger than Kaido. <laughs> she like marches in. She's very purposeful. Um. And and Luffy punches her, thinking that she's got to be another hologram, and she's offended by that. She punches him back, uh, and uh, so naturally, the the next thing for us to do is is make some McDonald's in the automated cooking machine. And she's explaining like, oh, as long as we have you know all the correct ingredients, this machine can make just anything. And then, like, I don't get what's going on here where, like, she's explaining this and, like, Jimbe is in the middle of, like, taking a bite of a drumstick and he, like, blushes like he's, like, he's embarrassed that he's eating from this machine. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or, or or the implication was, like, he's eating from, like, another foods and recycled ingredients or something. I don't know. I guess he's just, uh, maybe he's ashamed of his crew. They're all eating so much. Yeah, like he's already taken a bite of it. Yeah, he's ashamed to be. So he's all in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and and yeah, so now now and then the girl just ju- like unprompted just jumps into the air and punches the hologram dragon, the hologram dragon, because uh, uh, you know she's just venting about not having enough resources and funding for her research. And it turns out that she can punch holograms because she has something called a light pressure glove. And she can create holograms. She can destroy it. And uh, the holograms are, are mostly just pretending like they're being touched. Like if, if you touch a hologram and it reacts, then it, you know, it tricks the brain to thinking that, like something's happened. It's like you can only play Duck Hunt with the light gun. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and... Uh, you know, this, 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 uh, this Vegapunk is saying, oh... Don't ask me what's real and what's fake and what's a hologram. Decide for yourself. It's all an illusion. AI is taking over the world. What's real and what's fake? It's going to matter less and less as uh, as time goes on. Um, and she, uh, you know, we finally get her f- official introduction. She's Punk Number Five, Atlas the Violent. And uh, got a good punch, yeah. L- Luffy and Chopper in the middle of of eating her. 
having like a big delayed reaction to to hearing the name Vegapunk. And this is a very this is a very surprising uh you know this is not who they imagined Vegapunk would be either. And the episode ends and and Bonnie's looking perturbed, you know, she cuz clearly she's looking for Vegapunk. She's got she's got feelings. She's working out here. Mm-hmm. I imagine so, uh, I imagine getting stepped on by a giant hologram woman is someone's fantasy, though. Episode 1092. Bonnie's lam- Lamentation. Darkness lurking on... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Episode 1092. Bonnie's Lamentation. Darkness lurking on the future island. And the episode opens with CP0 on a boat on the move coming in to Egghead. We've got Lucci... Kaku and Stussy and this whole scene Lucci's beard his dangling beard is animated like a like a swinging pendulum huh and like I like it's not drawn attention to at all like I think just some animator was like hey would it be funny if I did this and I guess they were like yeah that'd be hilarious so the whole scene his, oh, he's, his beard he's got is this beard. back and forth yeah let's draw attention to it um, it's like uh, keeping time like a metronome uh, Kaku is, is naming off all the punks. We got Shaka, Lilith, Edison, Pythagoras, Atlas, and York. And their mission is to deliver uh, this the the Seraphim version of Kuma to Egghead and eliminate Vegapunk. So we got some intrigue. The plot thickens. Uh, back to I'm just happy uh, to see Hattori Luffy's again. Scene. Hattori's there. Yep. Uh, we're back. We're back with the the Luffy side of the of the story, and Atlas is is like just kind of admiring how much food they're eating because uh, now now uh, Luffy Chopper and Bonnie they're all like stuffed. They they're all in uh, you know fat mode. We've just eaten a, you know several humans worth of meals, um, and Atlas is like your stomachs are about to burst, and then Jim Bay gets this gets to have this very funny comment like oh my my mine was already like that. I love how much the Atlas, uh, the voice actress, just kind of sounds like Chopper. They're from the same sc- school of voice acting. I just love. I, mm. It's close. I like it. Atlas is far more like erratic than I remembered her being. Like she just she just like swings from like just like just happy and proud of herself and like you know taking anger out on on her, on her holograms and she just like cycles through new emotions like all the time. Oh, the, recy- the the recycling dog you see in, in this episode as well. I forgot about yes, that. Yes, Recycoli. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, It's like a robot garbage-eating dog. It just kind of like waltzes in. Yeah, like and, and then Luffy like throws like a, uh, like a a cup, an empty cup at it. Like, oh, you love garbage so much. Here, have this. And then uh, the, the dog gets mad at him for littering, I guess. And uh, so now the dog is chasing uh, the, the, the kids, as I'm going to call them. <laughs> The, the the not Jinbei members of the group. Uh and they're all running around trying to outrun this uh this angry uh dog robot thing. And uh Atlas is like, Alright. Good talking to you guys. It's time for me to go to work and they're like, What's what's work? And they're like, Violence. She's like, Violence is my work and then she goes and just punches the hologram again. So I guess her job is just to just to create holograms and perform violence even though it's like it's fake violence it's just imaginary but i guess this is just part of the 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 show that vegapunk is performing for themselves or something the recite canonically the recycoli defeated the three of them by the way (laughs) (laughs) it saunters off angrily pirate king level strength yeah so luffy is looking for more food he thinks he's he's found another food maker machine, but actually he's walked into the fashion machine, and he just kind of hits a bunch of buttons, and he gets his uh his red coat and the boots and stuff, and uh, the others join in and they start picking out their clothes. You know, Bonnie's like, "Oh, I want combat stuff," or and Chopper's like, "Oh, I want something that looks, uh, you know, uh, uh, cute but functional." And Jimbei is like, I want a Hawaiian shirt. There's so many Hawaiian shirts in here. And then they they come out. Uh, 
they're they're in their their space channel five jetsons uh hawaiian vacation yeah they're gear. and they're the, the boots just uh it's, it's a nice touch Jimbe, I didn't really like Jimbe is like wearing his Hawaiian shirt over his kimono. Well, I mean, he wouldn't want to go pants, which is not which, is, which is not like a super great look. I mean, you have to assume uh, he's only wearing a fundoshi under there, right? <laughs> I mean, like, the, I'm sure the fashion machine has pants. <laughs> uh, I guess so. Yeah, in all si- all shapes and sizes. I guess Jimbe is just not allowed to wear pants. It would be. It would be weird. Uh, he just opposes it on principle. Uh, Luffy sees something interesting from a distance, and it seems to be Kuma? Quote, uh, question mark? We're in, in, like, police gear. He's just, he's just a cop now, walking around Egghead. It's a uh, shame. So obviously, you know, we know the real Kuma is with the revolutionaries, so this would have to be another pacifista. Uh, they decide to run... Hoping, hoping that uh, the the pacifista hasn't noticed them yet, uh, but I, the the running seems to have drawn attention now. Uh, and now running it's, and now the... it's just booking it. The, yeah, the big the big kuma looking man just like pumping his arms and running super fast, <laughs> stealing clothes and food. Um, he locks on to the to the group and and starts firing laser at lasers at them. Bonnie is seeing uh, this this pacifista for the first time uh, today. And she's kind of stunned. She's got feelings. Um, Luffy is getting ready to fight, but then Bonnie jumps in and kicks him out of the way. Yeah, I, because she doesn't want to fight. You know this this thing that looks like her father. Typical, typical police action: just shoot a laser beam at anybody who steals food and clothes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, As Jinbei rightly points out, it is vandalism what he's doing. I mean, they are they are, they are pirates, so like that's that's already just kind of baked into their yeah. uh, way of life. But the Kuma is just ca- the the pacifist is just causing so much more damage. <laughs> True. Uh, Bonnie is crying. Uh, she's getting emotional, thinking about her father. We get a little flashback of Bonnie as a child, running up to her father Kuma, who has uh, like kind of upsettingly human eyes and like regular glasses. And they're having a moment together. He's like picking her up and they're smiling and laughing. And it's very sweet. And Luffy is trying to warn her like, hey, this is a pacifista. This is like what we fought on uh, like Sabo Odi. Um, and, you know, the pacifist is like l- loading up another laser shot. And then we move on to the heart pirates. And they're on their hanging out on the deck of their submarine of their submarine. And Beppo's being lazy. Have, Beppo's lazing around. He's hanging out. He's he's on his back. He's taking in the sun. Sachi and Penguin are like, dude, clean up after yourself. Look at all this shedded fur we found. And they just like hold up a bucket of white fur. Um, and they're like sailing into kind of a foggy area, and they're sharing this this immediate area with the Blackbeard pirates. Oh no. Uh, led led by, you know, the the Captain Blackbeard himself. And like the music they, going on here is some Pirates of the Caribbean ass music. <laughs> no, they're they're sailing directly into like a fog bank and like it's a, it's a fog cloud with lightning and that's just the mm-hmm. the Blackbeard pirates, man. Yes, and so we get these we get an introduction to you know we we've we've met all the the these commanders, you know, the, the classic uh, Logtown Blackbeard Pirates that we saw all the way uh, back in the day. But we're getting an introduction to the names of their devil fruits that they've gotten in the past few years. And uh, Jesus Burgess has the strong, strong fruit. And also half of, half of his face is like, it's like welded up with gold because uh, Sabo burnt him back in Dressrosa. Right. Van Ogre has the warp warp fruit. Uh, Stronger the horse has the horse horse fruit mythical type Pegasus model. That's not good. That's redundant. Well, I mean, it's bad for uh, Pierre, right? They they killed I mean, Pierre, yeah, right? Like, no, Pierre Pierre is a bird that turns into a horse. Oh, that's right. Damn. Okay. 
And this is a horse that turns into a, <laughs> a, a horse with wings. Right. Wow. All right. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been ri- ridden by uh, Doc Q, who has the sick, sick fruit. That and just raises they, further they... questions. <laughs> Could that even be? And then they wrap up this little uh, rogues gallery with, you know, the captain himself, Blackbeard, 3.9, etc., billion bounties, bi- billion berry bounty, one of the four emperors staring down Trafalgar Law. They're about to, to face de- face off. Uh, uh, yeah, these, I don't know, Ed, Egghead has sort of set a, a high bar on the, uh, just even for like, uh, I guess these are kind of average episodes, but like, there's nothing, they always looked good all the way through, so even if mm-hmm. there isn't like a massively over-animated sequence in it, or something, some really cool action, even like the small bits are, are, are well done, I think, and uh, yeah, I pretty much thoroughly enjoyed these episodes. Yeah, so like the first episode of Egghead was really good, and obviously the opening is amazing. And then like the three episodes since then have been like complete middle of the road, nothing like super remarkable or, or particularly interesting as far as like the the quality of of the animation or the quality of the adaptation, which which is like fine, you know, like it's biting its time. It's gonna it's gonna kick it to high gear with a very action packed episode uh, next week, I imagine. Um. Yeah, I don't like have too much to comment on. I thought I thought both of these episodes were fairly pedestrian, serviceable. Uh, like it's it's yeah. yeah, they're serviceable. It's nice seeing the 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 Vega punks and like hearing their voices and and kind of feeling them out. And uh, I'm excited to see how this fight looks. This this Blackbeard versus Law stuff goes down next week. I think he did a good job of showing off the sort of the wonder of Egghead and uh, uh-huh. what's going on there. So yeah, I, like that looked cool. Like when they were doing like the big kaiju stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they, they first got up that, there. That, that was maybe my probably my favorite part of the episode. Yeah, that was that was that was a cool kind of moment of you know it, even even like a moment of false scope, right? Like a fall, like mm. if it's a false epicness, <laughs> right? Uh, because it's a hologram, but. Uh, and the, the hologram gags are also they're also funny, but these are it's all good, good beginning of arc stuff to sort of get you oriented and uh, familiar with the landscape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they 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 were fine. Yep. Anything else you'd like to say before we move on to the next segment, Ed? Uh, best part of the anime, I, as I say, as I said before, it's the opening and the ending. New opening and ending are uh, highlights of my week. All right, thank you, Ed. All right, thank you. This is the Piece Together segment where we take your questions, comments, and theories, and then really ask the question that is haunting everyone, who's Buster Call and who now. I did forget to mention the, the difference between this Buster Call and the other ones is this one just fucking fell on its face. Didn't get anywhere. Um, lamest buster call ever, I'm going to say right now. Uh, yeah, busted busted call. Yeah, it's a, that's wait, what wait, they should have called wait. it. Yeah, they should have called it busted call. That's Stephen. We could change mm-hmm. the title now, I guess. But um, <laughs> what, What's our first segment, Ed? Zach, that is this piece. And Stephen has been nice enough since the, the subreddit archipelago is uh, barren. We're gonna. Yeah. He's gonna. He's gonna take us through this. Um. Yeah. All right. I think that the earliest one is from January thirtieth here from SNP. Um. Says, Hey, OPP. Just want to give my two cents about Kizaru. I saw people keep wishing and thinking he is the one who gave Luffy the food. He's gonna do a face turn and help the Straw Hats. But for me, I find him more interesting if he didn't do any of that. Each one of the first three admirals is all interesting in their own way. Uh. Akainu, he says, throughout justice here, I think he means thorough justice, uh, with his willing to do everything to destroy the evil. Aokiji, lazy justice with the realization of the evil of the world government that slowly turns him away. And Kizaru, unclear justice, or gray area justice, who clearly knows what he's doing is morally wrong, but still doing it anyway because he is just a cog in a machine. 
If Kizaru turns against Saturn, he is going to beat Aokiji 2.0, doing everything the world government do, but turn around, turns around when it involves someone he knows. Uh, but right now, I love him because his character, people like him who know the thing they do is wrong, but still doing it anyway. A cog in the machine is the reason why fascism spreads. So that's an interesting... T- I mean, I guess if you want him to continue being a villain, um, that's... Uh, that's a take. I always thought of Kizaru as being kind of morally gray. Me too. Uh, mm. Like I, I considered him the lawful neutral of the three admirals. Um, mm. So I don't know that I ever necessarily thought of him as a, a villain, just an antagonist. Who's lost? Yeah. He, he kind huh. of always did his own thing. Yeah. And kind of just like watched from the side. Like he'll like listen and be like a you know the government whatever uh but he kind of always went at his own pace mm-hmm. a little bit and would like step back when he's just like no nah, I'm, I'm good <laughs> like yeah i guess i i guess i would say i don't you know it, even if he did give luffy the food i don't think that he did it because he thought luffy is doing the right thing like he's doing it because he thinks that will save the people that he he knows personally and that he uh, feels fond of and doesn't want to see them killed. Um, but at the same time, you know, he's still going to do his job and he's still going to attempt to fulfill that mission, um, which is, you know, uh, slightly self-serving, um, but not totally evil. Yeah, and it's likely he also sees the same, like, hope and joy from the joy boy that is Luffy uh as everybody else does and it maybe inspired him to do one act of small good i don't know <laughs> there's one good deed for the day yeah <laughs> uh yeah the okay next we will go to uh, lil kop who says hey opp for those of you who have children nieces or nephews would you let the seraphim play with their toys <laughs> uh what <laughs> what <laughs> I mean, they are Busted kids. in the room yeah. for this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel like they would destroy no. the toys, but um, what an interesting question that the this thing just came cute. up with. Yeah, all of my nieces and nephews are like five and under, so they're probably Uh-oh. a little... The toys would be a yeah. little young for the Seraphim's. Uh, well, my ages. niece is about to turn 19, so I have the opposite problem. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, I I think <clears throat> I Seraphim think can deserve... play Mario Kart with my nephew. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like the the, the okay. whole thing with the Seraphim is they they are actually kids. Um, yeah, and they that has been kind of hammered, not hammered home, but has been hinted at strongly. Yeah, so they deserve to play with whatever. So How yeah, old are yeah. they supposed to be? Uh, um, Empty said, yeah. I don't. I think I think Mario Kart is good, but make sure they bring their own controllers so that when they inevitably destroy them, it's not on you. Yeah. Also, they they need like special controllers because uh, they're very large. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. King Doji has our next question. Hi, OPP. Great to see Miss Golden Week's plan, a Baroque reunion, colon, extra special volume, Miss All Sunday and Sir Crocodile back in action. I guess he's referring to the uh, the cover page. Uh, I'm sure this has been discussed both in the chapter and in the past, but what happens to punk records and the satellites if Vegapunk dies? The fruit goes back into circulation, but punk records is still his brain, right? Great podcasting as always. I have a have question. Do any of you... Th- do, you th- Sorry. do any of you yeah. think Stella's going to die here? I don't know. I he could, It could go either way for me. I, I'm leaning towards no. Me too. Me too. It's like whenever Oda creates a scenario where you're like, oh, this character might die, that's usually a good sign that they're not going to die. Right. Just, you know, track yeah. record and all. I mean, also, how many people have been stabbed through the chest and are absolutely fine? I mean, Vegapunk's not a fighter, per se. I, I mean, uh, it was a, it's a pretty big uh, little foot there that went through. It wasn't it's like... It's already very old. Yeah, but it was on the right side. It wasn't on the left side. So. True, but also, yeah, exactly. what's the likelihood that he's augmented his own body in other ways than just also apple true. top head? Yeah. So... 
Yeah, maybe like someone brought up bots that that repopulate. You know the. Uh, this is kind of unrelated, but someone brought up Oppenheimer earlier, and I have to say that that movie actually has not come out in Japan yet. Huh? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> not, really? not, not not until after the Oscars, I guess. Oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We 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 just didn't see the um the panel after he got stabbed through where like the um the the liquid metal just formed back oh, up into his um uh, his body and. Uh, yeah, that's what I was figuring would happen. Fine. I yeah. mean, again, doesn't Oda have the T two? Uh, in mm-hmm. his exactly, we mentioned that in his in his office. Yeah, yeah. it was covered up by the uh, Nika. The, yeah, you didn't hear oh. the uh, the T two drums because of the Nika drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. The <laughs> I problem. see. I see. Uh, they often cover over yeah. each other. Yeah. Uh, Guernica Truther uh, in parentheses Slay says, "Ciao, OPP." I realized after last episode that I inadvertently had used a greeting by another disc piece user. Oh, this was the was this the banger chapter? Uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, I was unaware. I thought I'd go away for a bit and take some time for self-reflection. I am not perfect, and I will try to do better in the future. I do not believe my actions that day <laughs> reflect who I am as a dispiece user, a dispiecer, if you will, trademarked. I choose to look to the future and not the past. Insert a song with a ukulele beat. Uh, <laughs> so I will now try to not plagiarize anything and do my gosh darndest to meet the level of quality that these decades and decades of dispiece have been known for. With that in mind, I'd like to say, hey, 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 hey. I said, hey, yo, what's going on? Now to my disc piece. <laughs> what's going th- on? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. The Three-Eyed Tribe. What up with that? Great question. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Where was the question in that? <laughs> <laughs> what's up with the Three-Eyed Tribe? Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll find out putting his en route yeah. to somewhere. Uh, yeah. With Kuzan and, uh... What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. What's up with that? Yeah, and I forgot about that. There's wow. so yeah. much that's happened that my brain is like oh. the, this. Yeah, I, I I think that is that that really shows uh, yeah. how yeah how, uh, all, uh, all, how all of our talk is yeah all of our talk about how oh well the Blackbeard raft was there so maybe this uh, mystery group is the Blackbeard pirates no okay so so where I'm glad are they it's then? not <laughs> I don't want them to show up they no. can go away yeah. they already showed up. But, mm-hmm. but they're not. just hanging out by the shore. I, I don't, like, I don't ugh, go away. <laughs> I don't like Blackbeard. No he one sucks. likes Blackbeard. Uh, punk, f- punk professional Poyo Faspi uh, says, Thalutatious Tho PP, threat, threat chapter as always. Oh, great. I'll stop the, oh, that's the Vegapunk voice. Um. I'll stop the Vegapunk, Vegapunk voice there. Uh, I love the symbolical impact of Saturn seemingly killing OG Vegapunk, the man with the ambitious nature to constantly innovate and invent, being killed by the man who despises this idea of progress. Really thematically impactful. Also, how many OP characters need a hole punched in them in order for us to redeem a free manga volume or an OP themed <laughs> sandwich or something? Is it oh, as yeah. many as yes, added Buster to a list. calls? Yeah, is this? Yeah, because we had the Buster ca- the Buster card last yeah, week. Yeah, the Buster card. Um, oh man! This time, st- st- stab through yeah. the heart, the whole yeah. punch. Yeah, actually, and we should have called this episode that. I know stab Steve's through the listening. heart, no. and you're to blame. You give Buster calls a bad name. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, the Buster <laughs> no, calls we've... did that to themselves. So that, no, no, no. That song we've accidentally named several episodes that. Uh, really yes. good. Yes. Yeah, and so then it became a running joke. Uh, that that is our bad episode title. But it get, to be fair, it's apropos way too much. It always um, comes around, yeah. Yeah, like Law getting shot through the back. Um, wasn't there something in the Corazon flashback where he gets, like, stabbed by Law in the back? Yeah, I like, guess so. I, 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 Probably I'm behind. literally just thinking of a little portion of Dressrosa, and I, I've already named two off the top of my head. Uh, it happens a lot, kids yeah. out there. Yeah. One don't, piece. Don't family get stabbed friend. in the back. Don't get stabbed or shot in the back, or the head. Uh, full reverse, full eye patch says Yahoo! What a fun, fun chapter. Old punctured punk. It looks like <laughs> Kizaru is back on his bullshit, and so are the big boys. <laughs> How do you think Dory feels about the fact that the last time he saw the man who is now his god, he accused him of putting a Mr. Five number two in his booze and put him under a bone mountain for timeout? 
I mean, traditionally. Wow, what a sentence. <laughs> I've forgotten all about that. The yeah. gift for that is helping to murder a giant goldfish, but does that same etiquette apply to Nika's? I, you can murder a giant spider demon thing, please. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, he's, I'm, he's I'm a very pro murder spy, <laughs> giant spider demons. Yeah, personally. Saturn, Saturn is the perfect spider size for uh, Dorian. <laughs> oh my Brogy, god, yes. So for any, uh, that would what be is it? so. I have to say now that Marion's put that in my head, let's squish it. If, yeah. yeah, just take your shoe he, off. He needs yeah. to. Like Dory, I, I want to see like it should look like the Monty Python foot coming down. You know, uh, I want to see like Saturn like yelling like, but like he looks down, it's like it looks like an ant to them. He's take the shoe off, they're like ew. Yeah, it'd <laughs> yeah. be even better if he doesn't even realize he's done it. And he scrapes it off. Or... Oh, that's nasty. Oh, ew. <laughs> All right, uh, Sailor Karna is universal. Says, "Hey, OPP, what a beautiful chapter to start my week off with." I'm pretty sure I got an ear infection, but Dory and Brogy made me feel just a little bit better. Have a great week, guys, and I can't wait for a four-hour podcast dissecting every panel. <laughs> yeah. Well, Someone well, with well, a two-year-old ear infection's constant oh, yeah. and awful. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. No no fun. They they said the way to avoid it is to suck out the, like, suck out the mucus. Me? Suction out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That's, no, I'm yeah. good. I am I'm so yeah. solid. I should have put a content warning before that instead of now. But there you go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, it's gross. Uh, that's why everyone hates treble, uh, <laughs> yeah. amongst other reasons. Uh, next, we have sunk cost fallacy god Cram, who says, Ahoy, OPP. Uh, XX underscore Nico Robin fan 420 underscore XX here <laughs> to say, Banger chapter, as always. Uh, sure, we can talk about Vega's love his friend... Because love for his friend and his friend's daughter. Uh, sure, we can talk about his mortal injury. Sure, we can talk about the incredible reveal on nobody's bingo cards. But how about them long lot Robin legs in the cover page, eh? At least one character hasn't skipped leg day, unlike Kaido. I forgot my question. Oh, yeah, those, Have a great week. Those are the freaky long legs again. I didn't even, like, notice. Um, I saw, it's not okay, as bad I, as that color spread. It's that, that one color spread with Nami and Robin, and their legs are yeah, like two-thirds yeah. of the page. I, I was going to say, the uh, there was too much discussion on our Reddit of the chapter for me to to actually read it all. But I did see them pasting that um, that uh, that one color spread where their feet are not on the cover because their legs take you know three-quarters of can't. it. I hate that color spread for the. That would be it was the ninja one, right? Like the one yeah, the, and the, which the is one a where, great one. Except for yeah. that, I, it drives me nuts. So I can't like look at it the same way. It's like the one with the water bottle with Nami, where you're like, "How does her arm bend in that direction?" Right. Don't Do you worry know what about I'm talking it. about? Yeah, the beach shower one. Yeah, yeah. The, they're and they're both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the straw hats need more women. Says. If Nami, yes. Robin, Vivi, or Yamato were isekai into an Otome game, so this, that would be a game for ladies where you ogle the uh, the hot guys, but they were in oh. love with the villainess, the mean girl who who bullies the protagonist, and none of the male romantic options, how would they seduce her? Will Nami blackmail her? Will Yamato take her to his lair in the mountains like Odin did with his harem? Just what yes. type of silly nonsense would they get into? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yamato would just hoist the villainous over his shoulder and just trudge, trudge, trudge along. Be like, "All right, we're going now." Yes, no, caveman like... style. <laughs> and she would soon to Ray fall in love with him. This is a great question. Yeah, <laughs> Nami would just like take him like. Well, villainesses are usually somewhere. rich, so Nami would be all about that. But I don't know how she'd seduce her. Well, not me. I feel like it's just like maybe I'm thinking of the live action too. Just like out there flirtatious, like is not gonna hold back anything, especially if money is to be gained. That's um, true. Yeah. Yes, but also yes. romance. Why not? I like. I like. Not me is not one to hide her uh, true intentions. I mean, Nami has a girlfriend, but that's true. Would that's be true. would be one <laughs> to be like, oh, like don't like who's also a princess. She doesn't really need her, but. I could but it's see nice Nami. to have she'd be Nami financially be able to, secure like, with Vivi. No. Nami would be able to flirt her way into getting the villainess to give her whatever she wanted. Yeah, she's got I mean, she's got I'm... hose. She's got hose at every log pose. Destiny. <laughs> oh my god! Wow, <laughs> that was that was a stra- I, I was stretching oh, before. Steven, I that. no, that was perfect. Oh. Are we calling the episode that? No, we're not. No, no. 
<laughs> it was a joke. Listen, uh, keep that in your back stupid. pocket, though, for another week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll write it down. Uh, Sheep Man, I've got a couple more here. Sheep Man says, how do you OPP? I'm fascinated by the prospect of the crew going to Elbaf due to it being shown already briefly through Big Mom's flashback and then seeing Kid arrive at the shores. I don't recall any island that the crew has visited that we've already seen some of beforehand. If that is the next arc, maybe that'll be the short arc that many anticipated Egghead to be. I'm excited to see what Oda has cooking. Uh, random note, I also I have a local spot in my area called Egghead, so my friends and I are, went there last week before watching the first three episodes of the arc. Looking forward to seeing other random restaurants that share the name of an op arc pop up in the future see now that's a good well, question what i mean we've had the the, the, the baratier the uh, yeah well the <laughs> yes. barate yeah barate exists in uh, yes you were there japan i was there it was very oh. very good that's some of the best beef i've ever where had. where where is it egghead probably has really good breakfast it's it if you watch our documentary oppjapan.com um uh, is where okay, you can okay. find it uh but it's in kumamoto Mm-hmm. Uh, his, taking uh, note of that uh. <laughs> yeah that's where i mean he so very succinct version of this he was the chore boy there basically oda mm. he was um, Luffy. yeah yeah and i think the chef there got under uh, the idea that he was based off of sanji when it is very clear he was based uh, zeph was based off of him um mm. <laughs> yeah so enjoy the, and that's no bull there you go. Yeah, that's a um, and I'm excited and that's ready. A joke to read that makes sense question. when you see it. Uh, from oh God, Wisdom Stephen Pythagoras, who says, "Hey, OPP, just started the chapter. Why didn't Atlas and the gang just turn their Dom shoes on when they were falling out of the sky? They know those things can be used to fly, right? What a plot hole, man! Oda's really losing it these days. Surely there's nothing left in the remaining ch- pages to save this train wreck of a chapter." Dot dot dot. I hope well they're joking. Yeah, that, that's very that's clearly a trap. That they better wreck, be a troll. <laughs> yeah. Pretty well, pretty I mean, they, it, do you consider a pneumatic tube a train? In that case, it was literally one. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I mean, yeah I, the, um, my jokes they did were bad slow, today. They did slow time you, down. They just got cut out of that pipe. Yeah, it was. Um, well, it's a capsule. Is, it, is is capsule train? Is that a thing? Is that a, is that a name? Or is that? Sure. Am I thinking of capsule Odd. hotels or something? bullet trains etc uh... enzel says hey opp maybe a question for steven but if he's not on feel free to discuss or not during wano the american volumes changed over to have wano on the spine instead of new world uh, with the first post wano volume coming to the states soon are we going to get egghead final saga or something else on these spines going forward um yeah it's interesting that you ask this because you know and i feel like i've I've been curious kind of I feel like I've kind of intimated this before, but it's become clear to me over the years that like the one hot button issue that Alexi feels the most anxiety about is the thought of having to change the title on the spines, uh, which is like, now I know granted there are, yeah. Does Alexi have any, I'm positive Alexi has no anxiety about that actually. No, no, I Zolo is like, just copyright. I feel like they can't change it now at this point. That's just that's I, all. That was like they I don't. I they, like we, a, we've I, had this yeah, discussion I, a lot. I have. Uh, I have no comment. I don't. I really don't know the the reason. But um, the you know sometimes depending on the particular timing of when the volumes come out and when we're working on the volumes, so he has to be in charge of finalizing graphic design. And if you notice, um, you know, I didn't necessarily notice this right away, but. You know, when you look at the Viz volumes, uh, it's not just that they change the um, the name on the of the arc on the spine, but also that that um, arc corresponds to the same like trim color and uh, the logo right. color, uh, like on the outline and stuff. Uh, that holds consistent throughout. You know that that whole stretch of volumes. Um, so it's also kind of like a slight color redesign and stuff like that. Um, so it's a little more complicated than just changing the, you know, the lettering on the spine. But, um, you know, sometimes depending on the exact moment where you're not necessarily sure, like, OK, is this an actual arc? Are we staying here for a while? Like, is it worth 
changing the name or is it just going to be something else in the next volume and then we have to do this all over again and i i do think that he he probably gets a little overly uh stressed out about that uh, cuz he always mentions it um but uh yeah i i don't know i haven't you know i i'm not making that decision for him but i would not be surprised if we see you know egghead pop up especially with um you know the way that uh toei has been really putting that front and center on their you know marketing yeah. and presentation of the anime so i feel like that's a pretty easy decision I, to make I, I think toy finally realized that if you market it as a new arc you're gonna get yeah. perhaps new people who are interested oh this thing's over now i could right. start from here even though that's not a great idea um I, I mean, well, I personally yeah. would be very <laughs> liberal about it if I were. We, we Americans Alexis's. operate differently. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's I mean, sure. Clear. Certainly, after a four to five year, um, you know, arc, it's nice to freshen things up a little bit and remind people that <laughs> there's a new story arc um, after Wano. I think that was definitely one of the impetuses. Part and of it. Like yeah. the, the new world thing annoyed the shit out of me and continues to mm-hmm. because they. I, they did a good job, I think, generally before, when they did the speed up back in oh, yes, 2010, it, 2011. Yes. The the unfortunate thing was that the, the New World thing corresponded with the point where all of a sudden we were caught yeah. up and they didn't have, you know, retrospect 2020 vision to look back and yeah. say, oh, this is clearly this arc. This is this arc and so on. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I would usually just take the risk because how many how many times do we land on an island and it's com- and we just leave immediately? And, yeah, you know, and it's we pretty think rare. we're in an arc. They don't pull the he doesn't pull the rug under us like that. Like yeah. Fishman Island, Punk Hazard, Dressrosa. So, I, like, I, but also yeah. if you think about with One Piece too, it, it's when you're talking about any other series, you're just like, oh, season one, season two, season three. When it comes right. to One Piece, you're like Punk Hazard, Skypea, yeah. yeah. like Park, yeah. you 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 don't think of it in terms of like seasons at all. Like even mm. I mean, the anime no. comes out in like it's the fall season so it's whatever you get during that chunk kind of mm-hmm. thing but like when you're reading it you still think being like oh the wano's not over this season and i assume i assume when they do the one piece it's going to be arc focused per season but much like the live action uh, yeah like east blue like sky like i mean like the mini yeah. movies too that came out where it's just like they condensed like east blue into a movie right, right, right. that kind yeah. of thing yeah i think they're realizing that's how people want to digest it. it yeah mm. mm-hmm. yeah um yes where's where's blackbeard says ahoy opp when are we going to see those blackbeard pirates that were last seen approaching egghead in chapter 1079 <laughs> <laughs> when am i gonna see law? Good i don't want to see them <laughs> when am i gonna see when am i gonna see killer when am i gonna see law i don't give a fuck can I get squished can under Dorian Brogy's shoes too, please? Thank you. <laughs> like me, like Oda, turn your location. Tell me Penguin's okay. Like, come on, I'll go make sure. That's... <laughs> That's true. I care more about the law pirates than I do about the Blackbeard pirates. I'm so sorry. Hey, Beppo, if anything happens to Beppo, I swear to I'm flying to Japan. Right? No, no, we know Beppo was with uh, Law. So yeah. I yeah. think they're both but okay. is he? But the rest of them are dead. Polar bears are really good at swimming, so he should be good. Oh yeah, that's yeah. well. That's only true because of climate like, change. To be Oda, fair. turn on your location. I just want to talk. <laughs> uh oh. Um, <laughs> our last this piece comes from Big J of today, who says, "I think an important observation was missed about Kuma's backstory. It's an epic yarn that begins following a simple, kind-hearted young lad. As he grows, he is in the background of large." world-changing events he loses the love of his life and raises the child yes it's the story of forest kuma Kuma. no bisaromi gump he even has a jenny run bisaromi run wow Wow. the the, the jenny and jenny that's pretty good wow that is think about that wow i why did we never put that together that's such a good um but uh kuma didn't show anyone his butt though (laughs) <laughs> uh, we know i mean we know yeah yeah maybe a pacifista did life um, is like a box of how many fruits. dr peppers did you, you never know what you're gonna get i don't like any of this um <laughs> by the way if you want to ask us questions on this piece which we have to read uh legally um you just join us on patreon patreon.com slash one piece podcast but we have more questions ed it's time to Peace the tweet. <laughs> yeah. 
It's Feast the Tweet time. First one comes from uh, Joyo Boyo, who says, Hi, OPP. This is my first question, so I better make it a good one. With that being said, what do you think Jinbei would major in besides marine biology? Also, can we get an update on those chapter predictions you guys all made? Most of the community was way off. I don't know. I feel like saying that any fish man oh, is going to... Yeah, I forgot to... Gonna go ahead, go major ahead. Go ahead. In... Saying a fish man is going to major in marine biology seems a little fish man racist. I'm just saying. <laughs> mm. you know? he's, he's, major, he's majored in uh, fishman karate, really. He's a black yeah. belt, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do I see him cooking? Yeah, I could see that too. He seems uh, maybe it's because his current outfit talking and about? egghead he has the Hawaiian Jimbe? shirt on. He's, he's, he's giving Jimbe. me dad energy. It was like, what do yeah. you study of being like cooking? He's like he's he's a grill master. Yeah, yeah. He definitely <laughs> he definitely would have um, number one fish chef or something. Grill all yeah. um, grillology. Grillology. Do, you want, um, do the update on the Brodsky. Yeah, oh, yeah. So last time we did this, uh, so everyone yeah. everyone went under. Uh, the amount of chapters it would be. So we're we're redoing our slate. Uh, the the highest one was Ed with eleven oh five, and this week we're at eleven oh six. Um, so Brodsky, last time you said eleven oh one. What chapter oh, do you damn. think Egghead is going to end? And by the way, the ones we have so far, I said ten fifty. Ed said eleven. I'm sorry, eleven fifty. Ed said eleven oh eleven twenty two. Alex said eleven twelve. Oh. Stephen said eleven fourteen. Uh, and Jeff and Jill said 11, 20, and 25, respectively. So, Brodsky. Uh, I'm going to do prices right. It's 11, 23. Whoa. Doing it. T- to Ed. Yeah. Ed, I'm coming for you. Ed over. Now, I mean, now Ed will already... never be able to host the podcast. <laughs> I already did it to someone else, so it's only fair. Marianne. The last time 11... you said 1086. Oh, I did? Wow. I'm going to say 1136. That seems fair. Um, I, that's I, everyone else left. <laughs> it's like uh, that's like Halloween. You can pull it in, pull it in Discord, and get a poll that way. That's true. Well, that's not as fun though. You got to put them on the spot. Did I really not get anything from Steve last time? Oh yeah, he left early. Anyway, what's the next question, Ed? Uh, the next one comes from Anton Bergstrom, who says, "I was pleasantly surprised with learning who they were from the last chapter, and surprised that." And surprised, no one guessed it could have been the Neomads. Uh, I guess. Also, am I dumb for reading We're Here for You, Straw Hat, in a hostile way, instead of them coming to help? I read that no. the first time, too. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that they're here to grab Luffy. I don't know that they're necessarily specifically there to help, but I think that they will help. I think yeah, it's just I the fact that they them. they have very menacing like expressions. Like, <laughs> like Brogy kind of looks pretty evil in that yeah. giant spread. <laughs> So I can giant, see that, I guess. Giant spread? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, like, I kind of did too, but you're just like, fuck. But it's like, no, no, no. When he said, like, or sun god, I was like, all right, no. They're good. The, the vibes are good. Yeah, I, I, I mean, they also had a connection to Luffy before. I'd be mm-hmm. surprised. Yeah. Uh, what was the first part of that, Ed? Uh, th- nobody guessed it. it was the Neomads showing up at Egg. Oh, yeah, that's because Caesar and uh, Judge got happily married. Why would they go uh. here now? Like they're they're <laughs> on a honeymoon, to Egghead. They're on a honeymoon somewhere else. That isn't. It. Although to be fair, they do have palm trees on Egghead. So that is not a ship I ever would I have thought about. I don't know if Egghead's well, no, it's, now it's like happened. the the honeymoon oh, destination okay. with its current state of. Well, before well, the bomb, Marianne, you don't remember at the yeah, at the end the of bomb the cover yeah. story. Yeah. At the end of the cover story, they had confetti when they formed new mads, and the entire oh, Japanese community right. also were saying <laughs> how it was their wedding, and really, it was. Somehow, that's not how I interpreted it, but, you know, that's fine. They deserve each other. And by yeah. that, I mean they deserve death. <laughs> yeah. Instead of, instead of to death do you part, till death do you part, it is die. And that's all they say. Dang, is that... <laughs> I'm just I'm echoing you're Nami. pulling a Nami. I was gonna say you're pulling a Nami yeah. there. <laughs> they both deserve it. Um yeah. Ed, what's next? Sure. Next one comes from Gabe Ruiz, who says, OPP, Dory and Brogy finally left Little Garden. All it took was a god returning. What did it take for you to leave Little Garden in their duel to the death situation? Uh, so if it were you and me, Ed, dueling over I mean, I guess, who but caught like, the bigger fish. We've what we're 
But o- o- Oimo and Kashi already told them that it was, uh, you know. Yeah, I think I think that was the reason they left. Okay. Yeah. Are, are we saying who would win in a fight if <laughs> Zach or Ed? For, uh, over a hundred years, like I, yeah. I think it's more in a stalemate. What would get us to stop? I mean, playing. if God showed up, yeah. I mean, I'd be impressed. Yeah, to be fair, to be far fair, if God <laughs> showed up. That would get me to yeah. stop fighting Ed over who had the bigger fish. B- bigger fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they knew that Luffy was Nika at that point. You know, so no. I don't, I don't, that's not really their reason for. Anything. I don't. Yeah, I don't think that was. And they also broke their sword and axe by that point. Yeah. Remember, they had, yeah, had yeah, yeah. rusted. They had <laughs> used it so much. Well, they've been um, back to Elbeth for a while. So. Right, right, right. I, I I assume since around the time skip they've been there. And actually, the last question is from Ice Pops, who says, uh, it's also about Dorian Brogy. What a great chapter. I never would have guessed who was going to show up. Do you think it was Luffy's new wanted poster that started their journey to Egghead? Do you think Oimo yes. and Kashi are on the ship with Dorian Brogy? Yes. Yes um, and yes. Either, we, we did kind of cover that. Or, yeah, they, or they saw it in the paper, and <laughs> they were just like... Hey, hey, check it out. Luffy's he's just down in Newark. Like, let's just go swing over and see him. Like, yeah, he's so yeah. close. Yeah. Uh, Straw hat, we're going out for drinks. We're here for you. Yeah. Newark. He's, a, he's our little guy. They got to go protect their. <laughs> I'm trying to think of which suburb of New York City Egghead would be now. I think Newark is actually probably. It's Princeton. I, you know, I, I mean, know. Newark is kind of cursed, I so I don't know. Hey. I got, I got trapped just there. Because for it's quite true a while. Doesn't, doesn't mean you need to say it. Yeah. Um,. You know what? It is JFK. It is JFK. Um, I don't know maybe no, no. I'd say Newark would be. Oh no, no. I'm sorry. Egghead would be Laguardia now because it's really nice and clean. It's really nice. The little. It is. I and you know the entire. It's time very like now futuristic minutes, now. I used to live like ten minutes away from Laguardia, and it was a shithole. Uh, as the way Egghead looks now is like what Laguardia used to look like. No, to <laughs> destroyed. Yes, <laughs> yes, destroyed. That's and leaking. Yeah. But like uh, nice and being and being like, overrun by giants, uh, yeah. very similar. Yeah, look, uh, <laughs> Wardia, you know. Uh, what Ch- were we talking Chicago. About? I don't know where Egghead would be in Chicago. Navy Pier. <laughs> Navy Pier. I yeah. Guess. Um, that'll do it for piece together, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's round off. <laughs> This has been episode 804 of the One Piece podcast for February 5th, 2024. I'm going to try and talk as little as possible since my voice officially gave up somewhere in the middle there. Um, I will say next week we have Henry Thurlow on the show to talk about, oh God, what number are we up to with the anime? 1093, I think. Um Maybe Henry will do all the talking for us next week. That's true because uh, <laughs> oh, so so I could continue being sick. That's good. Um, yeah, ten ninety. This is great entertainment. Three. Yeah, it yeah, is. It's right. good radio. Um, radio. Uh, then we have Randy Troy on February eighteenth. Rustage on the. I'm sorry, nineteenth. Uh, Rustage on the twenty sixth. And announcing here for the first time, Sungwon returns on March 4th. Uh, cool. Woo-hoo. We have a very cool March coming up. Uh, very excited to announce the full slate. Um, as I said, I'm trying to get all my favorites uh, this year uh, since we're celebrating our 15th anniversary. Um, I can't plug it much again because my voice is dead, but check us out at patreon.com slash one piece podcast. Support us. Um Steven. <laughs> I, I, I don't have yeah. Um you can follow me on Blue Sky at where I am under the name Stephen Paul there, just my real name. Um check out my uh my intermittent uh you know thoughts and uh, uploaded snapshots of my one piece read through that I've been doing there. Um uh, actually I am just at uh the Twin Capes and going to Whiskey Peak now. So Little Garden will be not long after that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so excited to see that um with this latest context. Um also, I guess, um, yeah, well, you know, I think most people who listen to this show uh know because I do intermittently plug it that I also work on Akane Banashi 
and Shoha Shoten. But uh, if you have not been following Akane um, and you were curious about it or you're like, oh, I don't, you know, I want to wait until there's a good amount. Uh, we are coming up pretty close to 100 chapters now. It's at a really Ooh. exciting point in the uh, in the story, too. Um, there's there's been, you know, in 100 chapters, we've had uh, several really good story arcs uh, to enjoy. So I'm just going to throw that out there as a suggestion. Like, hey, if you've been waiting, uh, why not check it out now? Because it's uh, it's it's really on a roll recently. I've been really enjoying working on it. And I think people have really been enjoying the um, the results as well. So, um, yeah, if you're ever curious about Rakugo or just want to see a shonen manga that is, um, you know, more about the arts than about sporting competition or fighting competition it's a slightly different type of competition um check out akane banashi do they have non-competitive manga in shonen jump um that's a good question <laughs> <sighs> roboco maybe i don't know oh no that's competitive um, my family <laughs> how was that not um marianne where could people find you uh, I am on the uh, wreckage of a ship called t- Twitter or X or whatever silliness uh, at Marianne D. Hobbit. I post a lot of Lord of the Rings memes and One Piece stuff and pictures of my cat. Um, same screen name. I'm on Twitter and Blue Sky, but I always forget to post on those. So, yeah. Also, uh, I am a voice actor, so you've probably heard me in several anime stuff on Crunchyroll. I'm smattered throughout any various season of anime so yeah go watch stuff and you might recognize my voice or not um we're still rooting for you for for uh york uh we probably should have pressured <laughs> emily and anthony when they were on to do that but... no 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 don't do that no i know that probably is the opposite um but we'll say it here uh big thanks to anthony and emily by the way for coming on brodsky where could people find you uh still on twitter uh, still with the same username that Zach hates, the word double underscore the number zero underscore snake, uh, and then Instagram and uh, this guy at Oive Rotsky. See, that's a good name. <laughs> keep in mind, keep a double snake until till Twitter dies. I'm going down with that ship. <laughs> yeah, I know you are. I, I got off the ship. I'm on a Zach dot one piece podcast dot com on blue sky. Um, I post there which I don't do on Twitter, so that's different. Um, I want to, uh, I, I'm I'm going to try in the future to do our episode credits here as well. Art today is by Brodsky. Thank you, Brodsky. Um, even the I sketch, very excited. You're Steve <laughs> this week. Uh, today's episode is edited by Delaney. Uh, the logo is by Yuin. Um, uh, amazing stuff, by the way. Uh, check them out if you haven't. They They're doing... Uh, some stuff for the Atlas as well when that comes out, and uh, very excited to show everyone that. The music is composed and arranged by Kirsten Carey. Uh, you could check them out on Twitter, and we'll have the link and all that on uh, on our post. Uh, on bass is Ben Willis, Jonathan Taylor on the drums, Molly Jones, flute and saxophone, Corey Murphy on the trombone and tuba, and Dave Hurley on percussion. For our new music, we hope you have been enjoying that. Uh, it is crazy to have actual musicians play a song for our little podcast here. Uh, again, check us out next week uh, with special guest Henry Thurlow and our anime recap for 1093. Uh, we'll see you then, everyone. Uh, until, oh, wait, check us out. Socials, One Piece Podcast, Instagram, Facebook, we're back. Forgot to mention that. Uh, we got banned from Facebook years and years ago, um, and I forgot to care about it. Um, it's, it's it's Steve's fault somehow. Yeah, you know what? Yes. Um, and we're back. I didn't so. know that could happen on Facebook. Yeah. I know. yeah. <laughs> no, it's not for political stuff. You're fine, but yeah. if you're a one-piece podcast, fuck you. That's what they say. Mark Zuckerberg mm. and his dead eyes. Um <laughs> My thoughts on Mark Zuckerberg another time. Anyway, check us out all there or call us at our phone number 347-497 Maji. Maji. Thank you, Stephen. The phone number again, 347-497-6254. Call anytime. Call anytime. With your questions, comments, theories, or best they might be giants pun. Um I'll, I'll take anything. They're a good band. Um 
we'll see you next time here. My name is Zach, and yeah, as I said, we'll see you next week. What are you still sticking around here for? Get out of here. The movie's <laughs> over. People, people like to be yelled at at the end of the podcast. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. yeah. Get the fuck out of my podcast. But please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha